Boone, North Carolina, Southern Conference football. We got a great matchup. Undefeated Appalachian State in the black at home, taking on Georgia Southern. Here's another look at Damon Scott after he gets the pitch from Satterfield. I like the looks of this play, Dave. I know Youngstown State made a living on that with their three national championships the last four years. It's, it's kind of like a quarterback sweep. you got the fullback out there blocking, but you do have Scott back there as a pitch man. It's not the true triple option, but it works. Satterfield will go from the shotgun on first down. It's a design play. Quarterback draw takes it up the field to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of five and a half on first down. That plays a winner. I, I tell you what, again, it's a good, good play call by the Appalachian State coaching staff. When you You've got Reeves and, and Thomas, who are such good pass rushers. You want to take them out of the game, make them stay at home a little bit, not just pin their ears back and come at the quarterback. Scott Satterfield, there you see the numbers. Thrown for less than 500 total yards this season. They make no mistake about it. Appalachian State wants to run the football if they can. Averaging 35 points per game from the top of the eye. That's Damon Scott. Nothing doing that time defensively. Coming up from the from the cornerback spot, Brancis Williams, the senior from Baxley, Georgia, makes the stop. They really aren't going to give you too many different looks. They, they call it the multiple eye formation. All that means is you're going to have the tailback there seven, eight yards down the last scrimmage. They're going to move the fullback around a lot. Rather than have him right behind the quarterback, they'll line him up to the right, line him up to the left, and uh, put him in a position where he can be the blocker. Third down and two. Appalachian needs the 30-yard line to keep this drive alive. Satterfield, option, pitch to Scott. He's got the corner, and he's got the first down, and it looked like he would have gone a long way if he hadn't slipped once he reached the 29-yard line. Well, he was trying to get go for the whole thing. He tried to cut back inside of uh, Marco Branham there and rather than take it to the sideline. He just runs straight to the sideline. He picks up another six or seven yards, but uh, he saw that, that black and gold paint in the end zone and wanted to take it in there. You're in the huddle with Appalachian State. Five and oh, a terrific season thus far for the Apps. Strong left formation, a wing on the left. Looks like a busted play. Maybe not. Satterfield across the 20 and near the 19-yard line. What do you think, Cliff? Was that a broken play? No, it's not. It's a, That's designed all the way. Again, it's kind of like the quarterback draw. He comes, takes two steps like he's coming down the left, like he's going to run the option, gets the whole defense pursuing to the to the sideline, and he just stops and cuts back against the green, tries to pick up his hole. Again, it's just a variation of the quarterback draw. It'll be second down and less than a yard. Another look. Here it is right here. The defense starts to flow there. You see uh, number 50, Larry Rogers has been on him just about every play and there's a big hole on the weak side. Damon Scott comes out of the lineup momentarily. It's a one back set with Alden Lance behind Satterfield. Leatherneck the fullback is in motion and this is Lance and he is into the Georgia Southern secondary and down to the 12 yard line for another Appalachian State first down. I tell you what, Dave, I really like the looks of this drive so far. They, they, they don't use the passing game, but they're using the entire football field, running the, running the power option with, the, with that lead blocker, and now you come back, you've stretched the field, give it to Lance upside, inside there, and he can pick up seven or eight yards. Gets the first down down to the 12-and-a-half yard line. From the eye, Kareem Young is in the lineup at the fullback spot. Here's Scott. Oh, he takes a big hit, but gets down to the six-yard line. Rob Stockton from the strong safety position came up and really put it on him, but not before a good gain on first down, down to the six. Huge hole there on the right side. Again, they, they've stretched the field. Now they use that uh, multiple eye. They offset the fullback weak, just barreled him right up in there. The hole, he took care of the linebacker at left. It left uh, Damon Scott one-on-one -on -one with Rob Stockton, and Stockton, uh, he won the battle of the hitting, but he lost eight yards, nine yards on the play. Kendrick Hall is split out wide to the right from the eye, second down. Here comes Satterfield, wants to turn the corner, cannot do it. Francis Williams comes up from the corner and makes a big defensive play, a nice one-on-one -on -one tackle. Great play by not only Williams, but also the rest of the defense, who, who uh, Williams came in and took the quarterback away, but the Georgia Southern uh, defense had taken, you'll see him come down here, they also take away the pitch man. Satterfield had no options with the ball here. You see number 97, uh, Edward Thomas and D.J. Turner stretching the play out, and that allowed uh, Williams to come in and make the hit on Satterfield. The Apps have controlled the ball for nearly seven minutes. It's third down and five from the eight-yard line from the shotgun. 
Satterfield wants the pass across the middle. The pass is complete to Lance. He is close to the first down. He may get forward progress to the three. I think we're going to have to measure again. Lance thinks he's got the first down, but the offensive players always think they have it. I'll tell you what, I, I think he's got it by the nose of the football. Another good spot. Here you see great protection by the Mountaineer offensive line, giving Satterfield all the time in the world to look over the defense. Lance, he checks in there, checks his protection reads. There's nobody he has to pick up, comes out into the pattern, makes a good catch, and hangs on to that football. All right, it's fourth down in less than a yard, and the crowd here at Kid Brewer wants the apps to go for it. doubt in the coaching staff's mind they're going to go for this one they take the opening drive and march it all the way downfield to the three yard line they don't want to come away with a field goal i, I mentioned uh, in the keys to the game beforehand they wouldn't mind this coming down to a kicking contest but they, when you've got a chance like this to score you got to look at it this way too if they don't score they've got a team that likes to run the triple option back up to the three yard line that kind of gets them out of their offensive scheme because they don't want to be pitching that ball down there in the black paint appalachian state on fourth down conversions this year Three out of five from the eye. Satterfield under center. Option. Satterfield. Touchdown, Appalachian. Great call. Great call. I mean, they got everybody. They got nine players from Georgia Southern just bunched up inside there. Everybody in the world thinks you're going to go right up the gut trying to pick up six inches. And it's a gutsy call right there calling the option. But uh, uh, you know, hats off to the coaching staff. What a great move. And that's one of the advantages of having a senior quarterback. Scott Satterfield takes care of business. It's a three-yard touchdown run. And Appalachian is on the board. Jay Sutton, the leading scorer in the Southern Conference, is on to add the extra point. is now a perfect 22 of 22 on point after conversions and Appalachian. Appalachian looks terrific on their first possession, marching down the field and taking the lead on Georgia Southern, 7-0. Leads Georgia Southern seven to nothing, and they made it look easy. Here's another look at that fourth down play that turned into a touch, Cliff. Well, Satterfield, you, you, know, you kind of wonder sometimes a situation like that, a quarterback will give you uh, not a free reign to call whatever you want, but may give you two plays. You come up there if they're bunched up inside, go with the the outside option, and that's exactly what they've got going here. And uh, it's not as wide open as Steve Bono's bootleg against <laughs> Phoenix a couple no. weeks ago, but he goes in there almost untouched. How could it be? <laughs> When your offensive linemen are motioning for you to come along, you knew that was going to be a big play. And the first quarter has been the right time for Appalachian. They have outscored their opponents in the first quarter now, 66 to 6. Georgia Southern, though, would like to turn that around if they could. Alan Gwynn will kick off for Appalachian. And, you know, this Appalachian team, offensively, they've got a lot of leadership. Defensively, they got some big names. We'll run them down in a minute. But the kicking game has really been a big key for them this season. They've really done well in that regard. Gwynn handles the punting for his averaging over 40 yards per punt and the kickoff chores. Dawson from the five-yard line trying to get to the outside across the 20 a good return by Dawson give him 19 yards on the kickoff return to the 24-yard line and that is where the flex bone offensive attack of the Eagles will take over and that is a thing of beauty looking at the numbers on Appalachian State's first drive 14 plays took nearly seven minutes off the clock capped by a Scott Satterfield touchdown run it was just a super drive. Great play calling. Good work by Satterfield. He only had to throw two passes in the drive, and he connected on both of them. Kenny Robinson, the sophomore quarterback from Concord, North Carolina, will direct the flex ball. First and 10 for Georgia Southern at their own 24-yard line. Option, Dawson trying to get outside. A big hit. And it looks like Dexter Coakley. Backs and receivers, Dexter Dawson, 85. He's a wing back in the flex bone. They're going to try to get him the ball as much as they possibly can. The offensive line, they 
are seniors on the left side, a little young on the right side. Loss of two, second down and 12. Inside handoff. Across the 25 and up to the 26-yard line. That's one thing we talked about in the pregame show. That uh, There you see the defensive line for uh, Appalachian State. Elliott, Avery, Ivory, and Miller. Good defensive line. They're quick. You saw the speed of this defense on the very first play, the way they pursued. They contained the option, and there was no place to go on it. Um, what Appalachian State, or excuse me, George Southern on the last play that you know they're going to run the option, but they want to get Holmes running the ball inside, and it was very effective on second down. Third down and six. Chad Holmes, the lone setback behind Robinson. Worthen in motion. Robinson, the pitch to Worthen. Can he get outside? Beats DiBernardo to the corner. I think he is very close to the first down. It, it depends on the spot. He needed the 35 to get there. And it is a first down. Another look. Just a good effort here. Of course, nice play by the quarterback. Takes it as long as he can before pitching it. Then Worthen gets a great block there by Chad Holmes, which springs him for the first down. So, Georgia Southern and the flex bone. They stay on the ground on third and long, and they make it work. And Chad Holmes, the fullback, gets the football, and it opened up for him. He's across the 40 and up to the 42-yard line. That's a gain of seven on first down. Well, the key, the key to the, any type of wishbone, of course, they call this the flex bone because of the way that the slot backs line up. They're not in the backfield at, at the offensive set. But the quarterback has got to read it. And that's a tough read for a quarterback on that quick give to the fullback. It, you know, it's a blind handoff. Your eyes are on the defensive tackle the whole way. Holmes averaging nearly 74 yards per game. And there he gets the second down carry and is near the first down marker at the 45-yard line. A lot of running. You know, we may be out of here in about an hour and 15 minutes. They keep this up. We're down to five minutes to go in the first period. We told you before the game, both of these teams want to run the football a lot. <laughs> you know, if it were a 1 o'clock game, we definitely would have made a tea time. And oh, the weather yeah. were a little bit better around here. I know I'm staying right up by a golf course down the road here, and you can't even see the, the, the fairway from the first tee, so that's out. You know, the only time the clock has stopped so far in this game are for three measurements. The ball has not been thrown incomplete. There hasn't been a sack, and the ball hasn't gone out of bounds yet. It's that close. Third down and inches for Georgia Southern. So it's a first down for Georgia Southern. Ball control has been the key. Talking to Tim Stowers before the game, I, I talked to him today and I asked him about time of possession with the flex bone. Surprisingly, they're so off to such a good start, four and one. You'd think they'd have a lot of time of possession. They'd be winning that battle, but actually they've only won the time of possession in one Southern Conference game this year. And he says the reason for that is they've been making a lot of big plays out of this flex bone attack. Holmes on first down is across midfield down to the 47-yard line. That's a gain of seven. Well, the wish, wishbone, although it's a running attack, it's not like the power eye where you're just going to grind it three or four yards. You're looking for big gains every time. And this is not uncommon. Even a little give to the fullback right up the middle, picking up seven or eight yards. It's a big play offense. Holmes would like to get his third touchdown today, obviously. Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 7-0. Second down and two. Georgia Southern, the quarterback, Kenny Robinson, did not like the alignment he saw from the Appalachian State defense. So the Eagles have called a timeout. We'll step aside momentarily from Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone and return in just a moment. Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 7-0. Welcome back to Boone. Appalachian State leads Georgia Southern this afternoon on Sports South 7-0. Just over four minutes to go, first period. Second down and two following the timeout. Georgia Southern with two timeouts remaining in the first half. Robinson. Has all kinds of trouble. It's sack time for Appalachian State. Jeff Green, the hometown boy from Boone, fires through for the sack. Well, that play was in trouble right from the very beginning. You see uh, Robinson coming down the line. 
Fakes the option. Here he comes dropping back. Slips right here. Although Green, I tell you what, he had two guys blocking him, and he just split it. He wasn't going to be denied on that. Picks up a big sack and moves him back third down, almost 10 yards to go. Yeah, so from second down and two to go, it's now third down and nearly 10. For Green, that's his second sack of the season. Shotgun for Georgia Southern this time with no backs. Robinson avoids the pressure, but cannot get away from the black wave of Appalachian's defense. Fourth down, Georgia Southern is going to have to punt, and a flag comes down late. I have no idea what the flag's all about. I think it is on Georgia Southern. Again, Kenny Robinson just in the trouble from the get-go there. The way the wide receivers were set up and, and, and what they did after the, the snap, they were trying to set up that little middle screen with the wide receiver coming across. The offensive line has got to at least hold up for a second before they move out and start blocking. There you can see that uh, the Mountaineers got to Robinson in a big hurry. Well, the penalty is unsportsmanlike conduct against Appalachian, and that is a, an extremely tough penalty to take for the ASU Mountaineers. Instead of getting the ball back. Conduct on the defensive team, 15 yards, it'll be a first. Ron Buckner with the call, so instead of Appalachian having the ball back, the drive stays alive. It'll be first and 10 for Georgia Southern at the 42. Unlike pro football, we don't get the number of who it was. And, of course, the coach knows. He's over there cussing him on the sideline, I'm sure. You've got to listen closely. Sometimes we do get that number. First and 10 from the 41. Worthen in motion. Robinson, the pitch to Worthen. Can he turn the corner? Cuts it in and is met solidly as he crosses the 40-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at the 38. That's 32. Dexter Coakley leading the charge from his outside linebacking spot. Coakley's made a lot of big hits so far. And I tell you what imp has impressed me so far about this option is the way Chad Holmes is getting out front throwing some big blocks for Wortham when they go to the left. Dexter Coakley appears to be on course to be named the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year for the second consecutive season. Gain of four on first down. Second down and six. Robinson will keep it and will, he will be dragged down from behind. And Appalachian did a good job containing the option that time. Well, they really did. They, they, they left it in a situation where the only thing Robinson had was to turn it up and get a couple yards. The pitch man was taken away. Here he comes out. The only thing is, if you're going to take the, quarter, the pitch man away, you've got to get some penetration where the quarterback can't be gaining yardage as he's coming down the line to, to read the pitch. You want to have him coming lateral, even losing ground. Of course, offensively, you want the quarterback gaining ground as he comes down the line on the option. That was Tony Perry coming up from the strong safety spot to make the tackle. Third down and four from the 36-yard line. Robinson, the pitch. This is Holmes, the fullback. We've got some serious contact down there. Coakley loses his helmet, but he gets his man. Coakley with a big hit. I tell you what, I never even dreamed to hit anybody like that. <laughs> you know, I turned my head the other way. Well, of course, I was mad anyhow whenever I had to make a tackle. was after an interception. <laughs> nice little wrinkle. You see Jamie Glover real quick in your camera. The, the, the triple option. Now they're throwing pulling guards in, so you get the lead blockers out there. And uh, Chad Holmes did everything he could, but Dexter Coakley wins the battle on that one. Fourth down, they're going for it. Fourth down and two. This season, they are 6 of 12 on fourth down. I think they're going to try to draw them off. Long count. Hand off to Holmes. No, no, check it. Robinson kept the football, and he's got the first down. I bought the fake, and so did many of the defenders. But, but Robinson kept the football, got around the left side, and picked up the first down. So clutch fourth down conversions by the quarterbacks here in the first period. I'll tell you what, I went with, I went with the fake too and didn't think they picked up the first down. And of course, originally I thought they were just going to try and draw them off sides. With, with the field position the way it is, uh, and this early in the game, I didn't expect them to go for it on fourth and two. We are inside of a minute to go in the first period. That is Chad Holmes, and he hits into the hole quickly and drives down near the 25-yard line for a gain of five on first down. Well, Georgia Southern now is starting to stretch the field the same as Appalachian State did in the first drive, and it's opened up the inside running game for Chad Holmes. And I tell you what, it just 5'9", 201, kind of that Emmett Smith mold. He really humps it up in there. A senior from Griffin, Georgia. 
Boy, these Eagles are a long way from Eagle Creek today. About a seven-hour bus ride. Not the best of weather this weekend. Georgia Southern could make it a happy bus ride home with a win. Here's Worthen, and he cannot get away from the strong safety, Tony Perry. Perry came up and made a fine one-on-one -on -one tackle, shy the first down marker, and that will do it for a very, very quickly played first period in Boone. We've come to the end of the first quarter. Appalachian State leads the Eagles of Georgia Southern 7-0. We'll be back to Boone in just a moment. Set to begin the second quarter of play, the Appalachian State Mountaineers undefeated, ranked number two in the latest NCAA 1AA rankings, leading Georgia Southern 7-0. Georgia Southern has controlled the football for nearly seven minutes. This is their first possession of the ball game, believe it or not, and it's stretched into the second period. Third down and four, Georgia Southern from the Appalachian 23. Robinson, oh, he is slippery, but he is chased down from behind. Good defensive play. That's Mark Ivey, the right tackle from Collinsville, Georgia, Martinsville High School, making the stop. It's fourth down. Just no place to go. Very well defense. Of course, Robinson thought he had a little crease, and with better footing, maybe he does pick up the first down, but uh, not a bad hit in there on the inside. And now they're going to go for the field goal. Now, we talked in the pregame show. This kid's been struggling, uh, talking to some people in their sports information department. He's hitting the ball well. And, uh, of course, every kicker will tell you, I'm just missing by a little. But, yeah. but Eric, he has missed four out of his six kicks. Yeah, four in a row. Eric Meng, ball is on the way. The kick is good. Ming converts on the field goal, Appalachian. With the three-pointer, they're right back in the ball game. 14-19 to go, first half. Georgia Southern's on the board, it's seven to three. Well, each team has had the football once, and each team has scored. Appalachian with a 14-play drive that took nearly seven minutes, capped off with a touchdown. Georgia Southern answers with a long drive of their own, kept alive by a key unsportsmanlike penalty call on Appalachian. And Eric Ming with the three-point field goal, 7-3. to three. And it's a touchback, and the ball will come out to the 20-yard line. Jamie Coleman did not want to come out from five yards deep in the end zone. I think that was a wise decision. It really was. wasn't It wasn't just a deep kick, but he hit that ball very high. I think Meng's feeling pretty good about himself after hitting the 40-yarder. Uh, again, he, he had been struggling, but uh, there are people say he's been hitting the ball well, just missing by a little bit. He didn't miss that one at all. I think he would have hit one upright dead center if that's all they had. Cliff, get a load of the time of possession on that drive. 843 for Georgia Southern. Now Appalachian begins their second possession at their own 20-yard line. This is Damon Scott trying to bounce outside. Does so. Takes it across the 25-yard line and is up to the 26. A gain of six on the play. Knocked out of bounds by Brancis Williams, and Williams has come up big early on for Georgia Southern. He's around the football a lot. Well, he has been. They're, they're running left a lot early in the game. Damon Scott takes it out there. Williams comes up, makes the hit. Scott drug him for about another three or four yards before going out of bounds. You know, you look at this day, there's less than 13 minutes left with 11 minutes to go in the second quarter last week. The Mountaineers were already up on Furman, 35 to nothing. Here they've had the ball for one, one series and one play. Satterfield on the option, gonna keep it. Got a lane. Uh oh. Got some room across the 50. Finally dragged down by Williams at the 38-yard line. Satterfield turned the corner on the left side and never looked back. Huge hole opens up for Satterfield on this side. Talk about some great blocking. The guy that makes the tackle is the corner from the far side of the field. And you know you don't have anybody blocking him when you come this way. So everybody else is accounted for. Big old number 62, Kenny Barbie, leading the way. There's nobody for him to block. Now look at Satterfield. He's looking for people. Says so somebody come up here and block Williams. Huge gainer for Scott Satterfield. Appalachian leading the game 7-3, 13 minutes to go. First half driving at the Georgia Southern 37-yard line. Satterfield back to pass. Pumps once across the middle. Pass is complete down to the 30-yard line. Got it to the tight end, Jeff Vollmer. Great hometown. 
Longboat Key, Florida, Cardinal Moody High School. It sounds warm. <laughs> Longboat Key. They see some great protection. Good patience by Satterfield. Vollmer went up, ran a little hook route, was right in between the linebackers. But uh, Satterfield just waited for him to come back a little bit, readjust the route, get open. He hits him, picks up eight yards. Second down and two following the first down pass from the straight eye this time. And the handoff goes to Lance inside. Lance has got the first down. He's across the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. And that time, Appalachian State just blew the Eagles right off the football. Well, they really did. You know, when you, when you run the sweep so many times, as soon as you see Damon Scott start to go one way, your whole defense starts to flow. And then you give the ball to, to Lance up, up inside, and he can get through that first wave of defenders in no time and be into the secondary. There's Williams again. He's around the ball on every single play. Yeah, the right tackle, Lee Brooks, made the stop. First and 10, Appalachian driving. Two wide receivers to the right this time. Scott is the lone setback. Vollmer, the tight end in motion. Here comes Scott. He's across the 20, still on his feet. And give him forward progress down near the 16-yard line. A slow developing play, but a good gain on first down. All right, I mentioned that uh, that he's kind of built like Emmett Smith at 5'10", about 200, 210 pounds, and that play kind of looked like Emmett Smith. Nothing was there, but he just kept kind of creeping forward, keeping his head down, finding little creases, picks up seven yards on a play that looked like nothing. The junior from Cedar Grove, North Carolina, and believe it or not, coming into the season for Appalachian, replacing Chip Hooks was a priority, and Damon Scott has filled the void and more. Second and four. This is Scott again, running between the tackles. And he's got the first down. Down to the 11-yard line. This offense, they, they must be in their two-minute offense now. They've driven the length of the field in about three minutes. This may be the fastest drive of the year. Another look at the play. There you see Scott gets a good block from Lance. Slides in there for the first down. One thing that's very impressive about him, he's always going forward. Even as he's getting hit, he seems to bounce off at the angle and pick up another yard or two. Doesn't seem to get hit and, and go back. He never goes backwards, but not even laterally very often. Scott on course for a 100-yard day. Still 10 minutes to go first half. Scott breaks one tackle, reaches the 8-yard line before a host of white jerseyed Eagles toss him back. Appalachian, second in the Southern Conference in total offense, rolling up 402 yards a game. And rushing, they are first in the league with a mind-boggling 293 ground yards per game. And there's a good look at the architect of the Appalachian program, Jerry Moore. Well, Jerry Moore's had a pretty good career here, 48-28 all-time. Uh, not all-time, but at Appalachian State, taking him to the playoffs four years. Satterfield on the play action. Sends it to the end zone. Out of bounds. Caught out of bounds. No touchdown. Tried to slip it to the reserve tight end, Frank Leatherwood, from Clyde, North Carolina. But he was out of bounds. Here's another look. I'll tell you what. We need a replay on this. I think he might have had his foot in bounds. What? Watch Satterfield. Good job here. He's rolling out. We talk about his leadership. He's now signaling to the guy saying, hey, you're not open. Come back to me. Come back where I can throw it to you. Ooh, oh, can't see his feet there. I'd give it to him just because I'm an offensive-minded guy. <laughs> and I want to see him throw the football. Third down and six. Appalachian can get a first down. They need the two-yard line to do it. They lead 7-3, 10 minutes to go. Satterfield, pitch. Touchdown, Damon Scott. Can't draw it any better. Damon Scott takes it in for the touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run. And for Scott, that's his sixth rushing touchdown of the year, and Appalachian State increases their lead. I'll tell you what, you cannot run the option any more perfectly than that. Satterfield took, kept the ball as long as he could, pitched it just before he got hit. And Damon Scott, you know, he's wondering where the defense is. He doesn't even get touched going in. Jay Sutton is on to add the extra point. Alan Gwynn, the putter, is the holder. And the kick is good. We've only had three possessions in this game. Appalachian has 
gone the length of the field on their two possessions. They lead Georgia Southern 14-3. Well, it's a beautiful time of the year to be in Boone, North Carolina. And it's a beautiful time of the year to be in Appalachian State Mountaineer. Here's a look at their touchdown. Look at that. Satterfield strung it out as long as he could. Makes the pitch. Lance with a great block. Damon Scott just trots in. So Damon Scott appears primed to have a big day over 50 yards unofficially already on the ground and picks up an easy touchdown. Scott Satterfield scored the other Appalachian touchdown in the first period, capping a 14-play drive. Alan Gwynn will kick off. Short kick. <laughs> Look at the hop. Comes to Dawson at the 14-yard line. Got a great block. Wants to get to the outside. Cuts it back inside. Back to the 39-yard line. Terrific return by the big play man for the Eagles, Dexter Dawson. Well, you go with a kickoff like that to try and shake up the return and break down the blocking with Dexter Dawson. You know, he's, uh, what is he now? He's ranked 11th in the country, the 27.5-yard kickoff return average. There he takes it on, on a, basically a broken play because the blocking's broken down with that kind of kick and still gets out to the 39-yard line. And we've got a change at quarterback. And this is something we anticipated. Charles Bostic is now in there for Appalachian, and he is dragged down for a loss. Big play defensively by the linebacker Marvin Hodge from Raleigh. Marvin Hodge was one of those hits that it looks incredible, but a lot of it was because Charles Bostic slipped and was already going down when uh, he got the helmet up in his teeth. <laughs> but I, I don't understand. I know these guys have, have done very well this year when you're switching quarterbacks, but when one guy's on a roll and he takes you on a nine-minute drive down the field, I don't understand why you make a switch at a time like that. Second down and a dozen. Reverse pivot. Bostic slips down. It's another loss back to the 35-yard line. It's going to be third and about 14. Well, I asked Tim Stowers that before the game today, Cliff, and he says he likes to get Bostic into the game after about 20 offensive plays, but I agree with you. Robinson looked very sharp. Here's another look at that loss. You know, this, was, this wasn't anything to do with Bostic. There was just nothing there. Going down and avoiding a bigger loss is really all he could do. The penalty flag down on the field, and they're talking to the Mountaineer defenders, so it looks like uh, they've got a decision to make whether to decline this and put them in a third and 14, third and 15 or take the penalty and uh, push him back even further, but of course it would still be second down. Now I did this, th I did that for a little while in high school. Third down. Know, and uh, they declined the penalty. In high school, for my beginning of my junior year, we alternated plays. I mean, oh, wow. we had messenger quarterbacks, and uh, it, ju it just doesn't work. A quarterback's got to get into the flow of the game. Of course, uh, at four and one, obviously Coach Moore is a little, has a little better feel what these quarterbacks can do than I do the first time I've seen him. But as a quarterback, you want to be in there and, and get in the flow of the whole thing. Third down and long. Bostic from the shotgun. Quarterback draw. Across the 40. Dragged down, shy of the first down. Stepping into the hole and making the stop. Tony Perry. He's also been around the football a lot today for Appalachian. Charles Bostic with a very rare sixth year of eligibility trying to make it happen. You know, a big hole up the middle on the quarterback draw, but on third down and 15, there should be a big hole up the middle. You know, let him have 12 yards. They're still in a position where they have to punt, and Appalachian State's going to get halfway decent field position. Kenneth Warob into punt for Appalachian. Appalachian had the rush on. It's a relatively short kick, and it takes an at-bounce. Look at this. To the 44-yard line. <laughs> Unofficially, I've got that as 15 yards on the punt. 8.02 to go before halftime. Appalachian with the lead and the ball back. Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 14 to 3 and not a very impressive punt. But watch the bounce this thing takes. Well, you said it was about a 15 yard punt. The ball actually went downfield about 33 yards yeah. and came back 18. First and 10 for Appalachian. Satterfield play action on first down. Gets the ball out and it's incomplete. Didn't have enough mustard on the football as he tried to slip it to the tight end. Frank Leatherwood. 
slippery down there. This is a brand new AstroTurf here at Appalachian, replacing a very worn out rug. And it's a little slippery. Yeah, that pass was uh, severely underthrown to Leatherwood, but credit Edward Thomas, number 97 for Georgia Southern. He's right up in Satterfield's face. Makes him throw the ball a little quicker, off balance, couldn't get his momentum, and it's tough to make that long throw to the sideline. But I'll tell you what, if he gets it to Leatherwood, he picks up 20 yards. Appalachian went with two tight ends on first down. Now on second down and 10, they will go with four wide receivers from the shotgun. Protection good for Satterfield. David Scott could not make the over-the-shoulder catch. And coming up to give him a lick for his trouble is Derek Austin. Well, Damon Scott, I'm sure when he went out in the flat, he saw Austin sitting there in a two-deep zone, and he's wondering uh, right about, let's see, right about now, why are you looking at me? <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't throw it to me. But he gave it a better effort than Ricky Waters. <laughs> oh, easy clip. <laughs> now, go. Uh, now, Ricky had a great game last week. Yes, he did. Hey, he's a heck of a running back. Yeah. He just didn't want to catch that one over the middle. <laughs> right. Game's out of, out of hand. Trips left this time. Three wide receivers to the left for Satterfield. Again, out of the shotgun on third and ten. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Big defensive play by the right tackle, Lee Brooks. Got a hand up and knocked the ball down. And for the first time today, Appalachian will have to punt. And Georgia Southern looked real good defensively on that series. They really did. They put a, they put good pressure on the quarterback. Had good coverage in the secondary. That's why that's why he sits there for this long. It takes a long time for anybody to get open. There you see number 44, Lee Brooks. He knows he can't get near the quarterback, so he gets there. Even though he's being blocked, he made the play by getting his hands up and in the throwing line. First punt of the day for Alan Gwynn. Second in the Southern Conference, 40 yards per kick. Dexter Dawson is back to receive it at the Eagles' 10-yard line. Line drive, end-over-end -end kick. That will take a great bounce for Appalachian. Bounces out of bounds at the 8-yard line. Not a real pretty quick kick, but I'm sure Gwynn's pretty happy that he kept it away from Dawson. And not, not only that, but put it out on the 8-yard line. Welcome back to Boone, Appalachian, 5-0 on the season. Looking to go 6-0 here at home this afternoon with the rugged Eagles of Georgia Southern in town. Georgia Southern 4-1, their only loss came to Marshall this season. Appalachian visits Marshall next week. Bostic remains in at quarterback. And he pops through there. He's got the first down at the 21-yard line. So the Eagles get out from the shadow of their own end zone on a key first down carry by the quarterback, the senior, Charles Bostic. You know, when I mentioned making the switch in quarterbacks, it's not that I don't think Bostic can play. Obviously, he can. He's the more experienced of the two. He's the better runner. And here you, you see what a super run he makes. If a quarterback can make that cut and then go back against the grain, he can make some big plays. Oh, he's a, a big play kind of guy. He missed two full seasons because of some knee injuries and was granted a sixth year of eligibility. Now we've got some movement down on the field and it looked like the left tackle, Stacy Moses, moved for the Eagles and it'll cost them five. He did get a good block, though. Yeah, he did. <laughs> if you're going to be offside, do something big. <laughs> you know, if everybody's in the stadium is going to see you. Do Stop. something big. Style over substance every time. <laughs> Here's the call. Dead ball. False start. Offense. It'll still be first. Offside first and 15. You know, this has been a relatively uh, penalty-free first half, and there you see at the top of the screen Moses jumping off sides. Penalties were a real problem for Georgia Southern last year. They have really tightened things up in that department. First down and 15 from the 15-yard line. And they try to get it to the fullback, and there is just nothing there for Roderick Russell, his first carry of the day, sophomore. And much like Holmes, he is built low to the ground, 5'9", 206 pounds, a sophomore. Yeah, they're almost identical. And here's Russell. He's he's carried the ball well this year. 23 carries, 150 yards. Comes in with a 6.5 yard per carry average. Had one gain of 31 yards. He can carry the football. Second down and 12. And when you're in this flex bone, you really don't like to see those uh, long situations. Obviously, this this offense is geared to run the football. They're put at a disadvantage when they pass, and Bostic is tripped up shy of the 20-yard line. Because you didn't want me there. I'm coming up to make the stop. Linebacker Rod Thomas. 
Thomas, another guy, 5'9", 202. I think, I think you got to be 5'9", like 205 to play in this game. I yeah. mean, all the running backs from Georgia. Just a great play by him. A lot of rain in the area this afternoon, but right now the rain is staying away, and that's good for both teams. Turf remains slippery, however. It's third down and 11. Three wide receivers for Bostic. Short drop, sends it out in the flat. Dangerous pass. It's caught, but far short of the first down. Roderick Russell made the grab, and Georgia Southern's going to have to punt. There is a penalty flag on the field. Holding on the white team. Declined. Fourth. So penalty against Georgia Southern is declined, bringing up the punting situation. <laughs> Kenneth Warob is in the punt, and you can see he's looking for a better second effort. Only 14 yards on his first punt of the day. Five and a half to go. Again, Appalachian State had to rush on. And again, it's a relatively short kick. This time, though, it takes a good bounce for the Eagles. Still rolling. And finally downed at the 32-yard line. So that'll help his average quite a bit. His average before that punt's only 34.9. In fact, I saw him line up and looked at Jamie Coleman back deep. He was lined up about 47 yards deep. Along with Cliff Stout, Dave Weekly in Boone, North Carolina this afternoon. Southern Conference football on Sports South. We're so glad you're with us, Appalachian, with the ball and the lead, 14-3. Damon Scott to midfield. Rips off a gainer of 17 on first down. One of the keys to the game for Georgia Southern was not giving up the big play. Well, they just gave up a huge one there. Tremendous blocking up front by the Mountaineer offensive line. Damon Scott just picks his holes. Huge game. You know you're in trouble when you're free safety and you're strong safety. You're making the first contact on the ball carry. To the 49-yard line, Appalachian with a first down, trying to build on their lead here before halftime. Inside of five minutes to go before intermission. Damon Scott again sidesteps one tackler and takes it into Eagle territory down to the 46-yard line. It'll be second down and five, and we'll show you why today's game is so significant. Here's a look at the standings in the Southern Conference coming in to play today. Marshall leads the way, and in fact, you can add another win to their total. They've already defeated Western Carolina today, 42-3. to Appalachian 2-0 and in the league, 5-0 and overall. Furman is right there, and here are the, the teams that are bringing up the rear. VMI has improved this year. Western Carolina has hit the skids. Citadel and UTC looking for their first conference wins. Second down and six. Pitch back to Scott. They're finding a lot of success on that left side, and he takes it up near the 40-yard line and the first down marker. Anyway, the, the couple of reasons they're running over there. Number one, Danny Bentley and Sean Clark are just getting off the ball very well today. And they're, they're moving the line of scrimmage back a couple yards by the time uh, Damon Scott gets over there. The other thing is you got Francis Williams, who we've mentioned a lot, the, the corner on the Mountaineer left side, number two. Uh, he's been in on a lot of plays today. And I'll explain after this play why they may be attacking that side. Third down and less than a yard. And again they go left, and again it's Damon Scott trying to turn the corner, dragged out of bounds at the 28-yard line. That's a gain of 13 and another first down. Francis Williams, the left corner. Of course, they're attacking that side. Here you see, again, watch the two linemen on this side. Number 61, Clark, number 75, Bentley. They get good blocks, and then they continue downfield to pick up more people. Scott gets a block there on number nine. Derek Austin is now in for Williams, but last year, Marco Branham, the last two years, he's been the deciding factor in this game. Oh, two yeah. years ago, he picked up a punt, a block punt, took it in for the winning touchdown. Last year, 11 tackles, two interceptions, one of which he returned for a touchdown. Yeah, a 72-yard return, and his other interception came at the Georgia Southern one-yard line. Aldwin Lance, not this time. Good defensive play by Lee Brooks. We called his name a lot here in the first half. 
Well, Lee Brooks heard me talking about Sean Clark, who, who got the best of him the last two <laughs> plays, and he, he gets penetration, makes the hit in the backfield on, on, Lent, on Alvin Lent. Second down. And you, ca you called it, Cliff. He beat him on the play. Interesting story. Sean Clark, 61 in that offensive line, had a lot of knee problems at George Washington High School in Charleston, West Virginia. Went to Fork Union for a year and then matriculated to Appalachian. He's a good athlete. 6'5", 270. Flag is down. Satterfield trying to work the middle screen. Gets it to the tight end. And down to the 26-yard line goes Jeff Vollmer. Not much there trying to set up the middle screen. Usually when that flag comes in where it did that you got a holding call coming. Came off early for a holding call. Not much at all there on the middle screen. DJ Tanner makes the hit. Would have only it actually would have lost yardage. Let's see what they do on the penalty. 2.32 to go in the first half, a very quickly played first half. Mountaineers lead Georgia Southern 14-3. Here's the call. Illegal motion on the offense. It's declined. Third down. Good thank call. you, thank Good you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Third down. Another point uh, about Sean Clark coming from the Charleston, West Virginia area. Uh, Jerry Moore found another offensive lineman from the same region, Tony Bequette, uh, from Capitol High School up in West Virginia. But Bequette has an injured left ankle and is out for the game today. So that's been a good uh, place for Appalachian recruiting-wise for their offensive lineman over the last couple of years. Third down and eight. From the shotgun this time, Satterfield back to pass. Dangerous pass, picked off. Francis Williams had it, dropped it, balls loose in the end zone, touchdown, recovered by Vollmer, the tight end. Oh, I'd rather be lucky than good. You got it. <laughs> it hurts for, to score a touchdown, your quarterback rating go down. He got the interception. 28-yard touchdown. That, that play was, it was kind of ugly, but it worked. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen and then fool somebody by throwing the ball deep. Unfortunately, he didn't fool Francis Williams. Fortunately, Damon Scott gets a big hit, forces the ball loose, and there's Jeff Ballmer with his first Christmas present of the year. There you go. That's going to be one of the strangest plays of the year in the Southern Conference and maybe in college football. Point after, Sutton 3 for 3 today, 24 for 24 on the season, and Appalachian with a big touchdown and a big momentum builder right before halftime. It's 21 to 3. So if you're Georgia Southern, you think you have the interception. The ball gets knocked away. Vollmer is able to pick it up in the end zone for a touchdown. How demoralizing is that, Cliff Stout, for Georgia Southern? I'll tell you what, you're already behind in the football game. You want to come back and make a big play. You make it while the Mountaineers are driving. You think, hey, this is great. Here we go. And before you even get a chance to complete your first enthusiastic jump up in the air, you're going out there to try and block the extra point. Um, you know, big plays happen, and they can just take the life out of it. And, and, and it hurts even more when it happens like that. The flex bone attack for Georgia Southern eats up time. They like to move the ball through running plays, but it makes it very difficult to catch up when you fall behind. Now they're behind 21 to nothing, but I think if you're Tim Stowers on the Eagles, you got to stick with the game plan. You have to stick with your offense, don't you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, 30 minutes, 32 minutes now is plenty of time for Georgia Southern to score three touchdowns. Unfortunately, their defense hasn't figured out a way yet to stop the Mountaineer attack. So they, they, if they want to stick with their game plan, they've got to do something defensively to keep them in the ball game. But they can throw the football. Last week, the two quarterbacks from Georgia Southern combined for 11 for 14, 162 yards and two touchdowns. Bostic had 117 yards rushing. They've thrown six touchdown passes this year. They only had one all of last year. So they are throwing the football better this year. It's just not what they choose to do. And if the rain keeps, if the rain picks up again, it is breezy down in the football field. You really can't see it, but we were down there before the game. The wind's whipping around pretty good. Gwen is set to kick off for Appalachian. High kick. Dexter Dawson from the two-yard line. Dawson picks a lane and shoots through it. Boy, he accelerated quickly up to the 27-yard line before he was tripped up. 
Here's another look at the touchdown. A play that should have been a Georgia Southern interception goes for an Appalachian score. Kind of an interesting call. They set up the middle screen and try to suck everybody in, including the defensive backs. And then Satterfield just heaves it deep trying to catch somebody sleeping. But uh, not only was Francis Williams back there, but also Eric Thigpen, the free safety. They were both back there in position to make the play. Kenny Robinson has returned to run the offense for Georgia Southern. Hands the football off right up the middle on first down. That's Chad Holmes across the 30, up to about the 33. It's a gain of five. See, now here you are in that situation where you're swapping quarterbacks. you got a guy in there that hasn't been on the field for about 35 minutes, and, and they're in a passing situation. I mean, he's got to not only get his legs warmed up back in there, but he hasn't thrown a football for 30 minutes. We're inside of 90 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern has two timeouts. Appalachian State has their full allotment of three. This time, Robinson will go from the shotgun. Three-step drop, swings it out, Dexter Dawson, first down, out of bounds, 42-yard line. That's a gain of 10. Robin, Kenny Robinson does throw the football pretty well. He was the Southern Conference freshman of the year last year. He didn't throw a touchdown pass, but as we said, they only threw one as a team. Here he sets up pretty good. He sees the deep prevent defense out there and just fires out to Dawson and lets him run to the sideline, not only picking up some uh, valuable yardage, but stopping the clock talk about Robinson's development. He had two touchdown passes last week against Western Carolina. I had a chance to work his very first ever game at quarterback last year against Marshall. It was a night he'd like to forget. A lot of development since then. Robinson, Dawson, got it. 48-yard line. Clock stopped. A minute four to go before intermission. Well, I'm sure over the past few years, the Marshall defense has made, made a lot of quarterbacks look bad, especially if it's your first try. But look at him. He keeps the ball up nice. Gets some good rotation on it. Throws a good crisp pass. Second down and four from the 49. And once again, Robinson will go from the shotgun. We've got five wide receivers out this time. Robinson has all the time in the world. Pass is complete. Knocked out of bounds. First down at the 41-yard line. Andre Rogers, his first catch of the day. Sophomore split end from Duluth, Georgia. Andre Rogers. You know, in a situation like this, you know, you're thinking about the clock, you're wanting to work the sidelines, but if you get an opportunity for a big play, you've got to take it. On that one there, he had Chad Holmes against a two-deep zone just screaming down the middle, but the safeties weren't even paying attention to him. Quarterback looking at the sideline all the way. Down to 57 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern would like to get something on the board, obviously, and Rogers again. Just catches it and steps out of bounds right in front of Jerry Moore and the Appalachian State bench at the 37-yard line. Stay low, Robert Moore. Eric Mang showed us some range on the field goal that he connected in the early portion of the second quarter from 40 yards out. Here's another look. Come on, let's go. The Mountaineers right now kind of playing a four-deep zone where they're giving him that 10 or 15-yard out. He's only looking to the to the left flat. Being left-handed, if I'm the Mountaineers, I'd roll the coverage this way one time, see what it does to him. Pass is caught. And down to the 26-yard line. Completion to Maurice Bing, junior from Savannah. Bing's coming off a career game last week against the Catamounts of Western Carolina where he had four catches for 81 yards. Clock will stop just long enough to move the chains. We're down to 40 seconds to go. And Georgia Southern has moved the ball into field goal range very efficiently. They still have two timeouts. Bostic, the pass complete. That's Bing again, and he is out of bounds at the 18-yard line, and now you're in the position, Cliff, where you can take a shot at the end zone if you want to. Oh, sure. You've 32 seconds. You've got plenty of time. You can take three shots at the end zone if you want. Robinson obviously listening to the color analyst the last two plays, looking nothing but <laughs> to his right after I said he does nothing but look left. Maybe he's reading the coverage. Maybe the defense called the coverage, I said. Five wide receivers again this time for Robinson. Protection is good. Wide open. And out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Again, that's Rodgers. Andre Rodgers. Some good reads here by Robinson. He's obviously taking what they give him. I don't understand why for about seven or eight plays in a row now they're giving him the 10-yard out when he's trying to advance the ball and stop the clock. 
what you want to do if you're in a prevent defense is if you're going to give up 10, 12 yards, make sure that the, the receiver stays in bounds and, and eats up the time. Got they're, time. They're, they're giving him the best of both worlds. Got a timeout on the field. Appalachian State opts to burn one here and maybe stop the, the flow of the offensive movement from Georgia Southern. And that was not Rodgers on that last reception. Uh, reception. It was Worthen who pulled in the pass. But it's first and 10 for Georgia Southern at the Appalachian 13. Eagles trailing 21 to 3. This is the 10th meeting in the all-time series between these two clubs. Tied at 4-4-1. Four, four, and one. Georgia Southern has won the last two meetings since the Eagles returned to the to the fold, stepping out of one AA independent status to the Southern Conference in 1993. Probably one of the more intriguing games in this series had to be back in 1987 when these two, two, two teams met in the one AA quarterfinals, a game won by Appalachian 19 to nothing. Tim Stowers remembers that. He was an assistant coach for Irk Russell at that time. He is in his sixth season at Georgia Southern. Jerry Moore on the other sideline in his seventh year at Appalachian. Last year's Southern Conference Coach of the Year. Georgia Southern went 6-5 and five last year and missed the playoffs, but they look like they're going to the postseason again this year. Now they shift out of the shotgun formation on first down. Handoff right up the middle. Holmes has a good head of steam. He is inside the five-yard line and near the three and near a first down. Dave, that's one thing this flex bone will do for you that the, the old wishbone won't. You, there's so many different options. Uh, even though that the defense over there, they know you like to run the option. They know that's all you want to do. They, they've got to cover the whole field because you have so many different choices. There you go. I don't know. I don't know if that's the triple option. Or not. It didn't look like Robinson was reading that. It looked like just a straight dive up the middle. And Chad Holmes does his job. That's what he does so well. We're down to 18 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern has opted to burn one of their two remaining timeouts. So they have one timeout left and 18 seconds to work with. Appalachian has two timeouts, and they are controlling the scoreboard, leading 21 to 3. It was 7 0 Appalachian at the end of the first quarter of play. And the apps have tacked on two touchdowns since then. Georgia Southern, their only score came on a field goal very early in the second period. There's a look at some of the crowd at Kid Brewer Stadium. Renovations going on on the other side of the field, but that very representative crowd on what has been a very dreary afternoon here in North Carolina. All right, Cliff, what do you do? You think you might pass here? But with the one time out, you've got, to, you've got time to run the ball one time. If you don't score, you, you can still throw two passes into the end zone. It looks like they may be going for that here on the first down. Robinson, the handoff goes to Roderick Russell. He does not have the touchdown. He is to the one-yard line. See, now they're in trouble. They're on a the one-yard line. They, have, they, they either score on a run or they have to throw it. And Georgia Southern has burned their final timeout. We have 12 seconds to go. It's first and goal. They, they, they basically they basically now have to throw the ball two plays in a row unless they run it and score. If they run it and don't score, the half's over. And, uh, you know, maybe you save that play for second down and, and, and do some kind of draw or rollout or option where you still have a chance of getting out of bounds, whatever. But uh, when, when you just gave away, you know, you come up under center, they say, okay, they're going to run the football. We're going to come up and stop the run. You take all the guessing out of it for the defense. But now you put yourself in a hole. I mean, this is what, uh, this is where the Monday morning quarterbacks have fun on coaches' decisions. What does he do here? Does he, does he risk it and go for the run, thinking he can get it in there? Or does he do what uh, everybody says and throw the ball two times? This is a critical point of this game, Appalachian leading 21-3. to If Georgia Southern could punch this in, they would carry a lot of momentum to the locker room. Well, it's a, it's a neat situation for them because they get the ball back on the opening kickoff of the second half, so they could they could actually score 14 unanswered points. 
got to believe you want to try to get the ball to your big play guy, Dexter Dawson, in this situation. First and goal. There's movement in the line. Robinson is into the end zone for the touchdown, but a flag is down, and we're down to eight seconds to go in the first half. And that is going to stand. It is going to be a touchdown. The penalty pending against Appalachian. Offsides. Defense. Touchdown. I'll tell you what, it's a gutsy call. I guess it's the right one. It worked. But <laughs> <laughs> you got some questions to answer if you don't make it. So the two-yard touchdown run by Kenny Robinson gets Georgia Southern back in the ball game. Ming is on to add the extra point. Brandon Smith is the holder. And it's good. So with just eight seconds to go before halftime, Georgia Southern gets a much-needed touchdown. Their first of the afternoon. It's 21 to 10. Here's another look at that play. Remember, it was feast or famine. They had to get in for the score. The clock was going to run out. Here, this is no triple option. It's just down the line option. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Chad Holmes, he's there leading for the outside. He had the pitch there, too, but, you know, why risk it? If the quarterback thinks he can pick up the two yards, just dive it in, which is exactly what Robinson did. And for Kenny Robinson, that was his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And Georgia Southern, uh, the second quarter has been their most prolific scoring quarter, 54 points through their first five games, and they get their first touchdown with just eight ticks remaining. You know, I've known a lot of coaches that uh, if they have a good defense, this is exactly the situation that the, the, at the beginning of the game when you flip the coin. If they've got a good defense, they'll, they'll elect to kick all the time just for this situation right here. Georgia Southern with eight seconds left in the half, it's very unlikely that, that uh, the Mountaineers score, so they've got a chance to score 14 unanswered points and take a blowout out, a 21-3 blowout, come back and in the first few minutes of the second half make it a 21-17 game. Eric Mang is set to kick off and we can only assume that this will be a squib kick with only eight seconds to go. Appalachian State has two timeouts and it is a line drive kick taken at the 15-yard line. Four seconds. So Appalachian will get one play here to end the first half. So here in the first half of this game, Cliff, ball control was the story of the first period. The second period, a little bit more wide open offense. Some big plays by Appalachian State. Well, Appalachian State, their, their biggest play, well, they got a couple long runs uh, in, in just their regular offense, and then the botched screen pass, an interception, then the, fumble, the, the interceptor fumbles, and they get a touchdown out of it. That was an impressive drive by Jordan Southern. I was really impressed with Robinson's ability to, to move the football around in that prevent defense situation, stopping the clock and driving it downfield. It showed a lot of points. Damon Scott, the carry that runs out the clock here in the first half of play, and the teams head back to the locker room. Appalachian State leading 21 to 10. Our Ted Byrne is down on the field, and we will have a, a comment from Tim Stowers, the head football coach of the Georgia Southern Eagles, momentarily. He's got to be very happy about that late score. You mentioned it, Cliff, a very impressive drive to, to get back in this ball game in the final stages of the second quarter. Well, momentum is such a, a big thing in football, and here they've scored the last thing. They know that they get the ball coming right back, so they're got to be excited. Let's go down to Ted. Great drive right here at the end of the half. A lot of courage in your offense to run that ball like that. Well, Kenny did a super job of running the shotgun, something we put in new this year. Uh, then we mixed in a running game a little bit, and big play with 12 seconds on the clock. I think it was second down. Right. And Kenny got the ball in the end zone, and super job of play calling by Coach Dick, our offense coordinator. And uh, we're ready. We're going to be ready for the second half. And no hesitation to go for it when it's uh, fourth down and short. Well, that's the bread and butter play. It's worked every time. Since. Nobody's ever stopped it. Right. All right. Well, good luck. Thank Appreciate you. It. Coach Tim Stowers and guys, it's cold down here as the game goes on. The temperature continues to drop. I'll bet you it has dropped 10 degrees since uh, about noontime today. And right at the end of the first half here, we had a pretty good little miss coming. And that'll be a factor as we go on and off. And this turf, even though it's a new turf, it's freshly painted. And with that cold breeze and the temperatures dropping, I wouldn't be surprised we see this artificial turf become a little more slippery before uh, the game is over with. Guys, back up to you. Thanks, Ted. That was a good point. 
Our halftime activities are next from Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. We've reached the break. Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 21-10. Unbeaten Appalachian, the Mountaineers of ASU, lead Georgia Southern 21 to 10 here at halftime. And Cliff Stout, Georgia Southern, that late touchdown got them right back in the ball game. That was a real confidence boost. They're within 11, but I think one of the big stories of the first half has to be the ability of Appalachian State to shorten the game by taking so much time off the clock with their time-consuming possessions. Well, they, they have just looked flawless on, on offense. They were only stopped one time, and that was when they did something very uncharacteristic. They came out and threw three incomplete passes in a row. Other than that, they've just gone right down the field. They've only punted the ball one time. Uh, the running back are having a very good game. Damon Scott's picking up some big yardage, but I'm really impressed with Satterfield. We talked before the game about him just being kind of a, a leader on the field. I mean, he makes some great plays out there. He puts them in right situations, runs the option. As, as rare as they do run it, he runs it very well, and uh, he throws the ball pretty well. The other guy throwing the football, Robinson, on that last drive really impressed me. You're there against a prevent defense. You know you've got to make some points. There's a tendency to throw the ball into coverage and try to make a big play, but he didn't do that. He just took it, took it, took it, and they end up with seven points. Yeah, Georgia Southern reacted well with that last-minute drive down the field, scoring with only four seconds remaining in the first half, considering the fact that it appeared as if they had Appalachian stop near their own goal line. Brancis Williams had an interception of a Scott Satterfield pass, but the ball was knocked away by Damon Scott, recovered in the end zone by their tight end, Volmer, and that was a real momentum swing. Sure it was. I mean, it would be a 14-10 to 10 game if not for that play, or maybe 14-3, to 3, you know, maybe they don't drive 90 yards and score, but uh, yeah, it's been the only turnover of the game, which is kind of surprising. There haven't been any fumbles. Uh, as we mentioned uh, before the game, Georgia Southern, they've only lost four fumbles all year, but they've put it on the ground 13 times with the option, and uh, they haven't put the ball down on the turf one time today, and they, so the only turnover in the game is a non-factor because it really didn't matter. Might as well have been a complete pass. Well, we've reached the middle of the college football season, but the college basketball season really begins tonight. Midnight Madness basketball practice all over the country, and that includes Appalachian State. Ted Byrne is standing by with the head coach of the Appalachian Hoop team, Tom Apke. Ted? Thanks, Dave. Tom, the last time I ran into you was up at, at the ACC tournament when you were there, serving as a member of a committee, watching for the Southern Conference, how they do things in that building, because that's where the Southern Conference basketball tournament will be held. Ted, that's exactly right. This is really an exciting time. Uh, we're starting basketball practice tonight at midnight. Uh, most schools that aren't doing that will begin tomorrow, October 15th being the first day you can begin basketball practice in a year that's the 75th anniversary for the Southern Conference, so that's a, a remarkable celebration in itself, but the fact that we're going to the Greensboro Coliseum really caps it off and makes it extremely exciting because that building is going to do so much for our conference tournament, for the fans that support all of our institutions. Uh, I went down with the commissioner and a couple other folks last spring to watch how the building would function for the ACC tournament, and it's going to just be dynamite for our league we're really looking forward to it and really the southern conference tournament is going to be kind of like a blue collar tournament because those acc tickets are hard to get but this will be a great uh, chance for the fans in that area to see southern conference basketball up close well first of all we have been so successful with our tournament in Asheville. we're a little nostalgic about leaving there but uh, we have had such demand for the tickets now that being in a larger building in greensboro i think is a real service to our institutions the alumni and the fans fans and supporters of all of our schools. We simply need to get more people to be able to come to the games in the larger building in Greensboro is going to allow us to do that. But you're right, many Greensboro sports enthusiasts cannot get tickets to the ACC. Uh, we're hoping they're going to come out and really support our tournament. It's going to be great basketball. It's going to be really a March Madness week long of basketball. Our conference tournament and the ACC conference tournaments coming just a few days apart. It should really be a great atmosphere in Greensboro this March. Now, I know you should be taking a nap because you guys are going to hit the floors tonight at midnight. You've got an unbeatable, or I guess an unbelievable would be the better word, uh, non-conference schedule this year. Yeah, we're glad to finally get started. We have a young team. We'll have four freshmen and four sophomores on our 12-man roster, and so we're going to get an early start and have a midnight madness tonight because we've got to get ready. We, uh, we hope that the December schedule against teams like uh, Wake Forest, Georgia Tech, 
uh, Clemson, UNC Charlotte. Uh, we play Indiana in the first round of their tournament right after Christmas. We hope right. all of those tough non-league games prepare us for the tough times that we're going to be facing when the league games start in mid-January because the conference race is going to be really tough. All right, Tom Hapke, thanks for joining us. By the way, a day like today reminds Tom and I why we like basketball because it's indoors and it's warm. Amen, brother. Back up to you guys. <laughs> all right, Ted, thank you very much and good luck to Tom Apke and the Appalachian State men's basketball team. Midnight Madness practice tonight here in Boone. We're at halftime. ASU leads Georgia Southern 21-10. We're back at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina, where the Appalachian State Mountaineers and their fans are happy, and they should be. They're winning over Georgia Southern 21 to 10. Appalachian is ranked second this week in the latest NCAA 1AA poll. Georgia Southern is number 13. Hey, here we are. Wave. <laughs> there you go. Tell you what. I gotta get my coat on. Let me get my. Oh, yeah, shoot! I would have fixed my tie if you knew, if I knew you were gonna put us on TV. Hey, it's time to take a look at some of the highlights of the first half of action. Brought to you by Partners. This was one of the more unique plays of the season in college football. Satterfield, Scott Satterfield, frankly, put this one up for grabs. Brancis Williams had it for the interception, but that's really where the fun begins. i tell you what, that's a gift for a quarterback. As we talk about, his rating goes down, but he gets a touchdown. He doesn't get a touchdown pass, but the team scores, and, and Vollmer gets a gift. Vollmer, the tight end, recovers it. Earlier, Satterfield with the picture-perfect pitch to Damon Scott, takes it into the end zone for a score. Scott, in the first half, alone 17 carries for 100 yards and this is the capper of the game opening drive for Appalachian State on fourth down Satterfield takes it himself and goes virtually untouched for the score same exact play that uh, we just saw Scott Damon Scott score on a few minutes early quarterback just kept it and there you see uh, Georgia Southern running the same play with Robinson. It's a, not really a quarterback sneak. It is an option, but you know, the quarterback sneak works a lot better if you just kind of slide off tackle. Everything kind of caves in there. You see a lot of quarterbacks, you know, they, they practically try to break their neck, getting it six inches right up the middle. But if you just kind of slide down the line, you're going to find a hole and just fall through it. Partner is also providing our first half stats today. And we'll check the statistical breakdown of the first two quarters in just a moment. <laughs> On this beautiful fall afternoon in Boone, we'll step aside momentarily, return with more halftime activities in just a moment. <laughs> Appalachian with the lead over Georgia Southern, 21 to 10 here at halftime. Both teams will be returning to the field momentarily, but while we have a moment, let's go ahead and check the U.S. Air stats for the first half of action. And really, statistically, a fairly even ball game when it comes to turnovers and first downs, but rushing yards, Cliff, that's been the key. Look at the Mountaineers, 166 yards on the ground, up 100 of that 166 total, Damon Scott. Damon Scott, 17 carries, 100 yards with his longest of 18, so he's He's been pretty darn consistent rattling off the, the running game. And, uh, yeah, a 99-yard advantage there for Appalachian State. Obviously giving up some in the passing yardage category, but Robinson got all that on the last drive where he was 8 for 8, uh, picking up all those yards. Chad Holmes, 8 carries, 44 yards. Need to work on our statistician on the math there. 166-21 is not 188. Somebody got out of school a little early. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have even noticed that. Quarterback. Uh, maybe I need to go back people. for a refresher course myself. Doggone. Oh, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we figured Damon Scott would be the key to the Appalachian State offense. He had 170 yards in their big win last week at Furman, a game in which Appalachian rushed out to a big early lead, and he has looked very, very good. Scott Satterfield. Five carries, 54 yards, including a 36-yarder that led directly to another touchdown. Yeah, he's looked real good carrying the football on the, on the option, and that one, the 36-yarder, you know, if he's uh, if he's Steve Bono, he scores. There you go. Uh, there's a good look at the campus here in Boone. Here's more on Appalachian State University. A university in North Carolina's Blue Ridge Mountains stands above the rest. 
at Appalachian State University, the emphasis is on instruction through small classes and close faculty-student relationships. The freshman seminar helps ease the transition from high school to the university's community of learning. Appalachian is recognized nationwide for its first-rate faculty and academic reputation and for offering a best-buy university education in a wide range of undergraduate and graduate fields. Students find exceptional recreational and learning opportunities on the friendly mountain campus and in the Boone area. Appalachian State University, a university above all. Let's head down to the sidelines where Ted Burns is standing by with the head coach of the App State Mountaineers. Oh, we lost him. Ted. <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> you had him. What happened? Man waits for no one. Okay. Coach, coach Moore said, looking at the clock, he said, they're going to kick this thing off in 40 seconds. I said, Coach, we're running a commercial. Don't worry about it. He says, i got to get out there. I'm in a lead. And they're very intense. Uh, interesting, though, the Georgia Southern guys came out of the locker room and started to the wrong sidelines. I think they're a little focused. I think they're a little intense. This should be a whale of the second half. <laughs> All right. Ted, when you get the coach, you got to clamp him down. Look, look, you're a quarterback. I'm an ex-center. I never tackled anybody. <laughs> what, what, what would he have said? <laughs> uh, I think I think Ted paraphrased it pretty well. <laughs> All right. Well, Jerry, uh, obviously, he's got his game face on, and I think that's good for Appalachian State. A lot of work yet to do for both these two teams here in the second half. 21-10 to 10 at the break, a game in which Appalachian led 7-0 after one, and at one point had a 21-3 lead until just eight seconds remained in the first half. Kenny Robinson banged in for a much needed touchdown for Georgia Southern and the Eagles will get the ball first as we begin the third quarter of play. Alan Gwynn will kick off and the ever dangerous Dexter Darson and Marlo Worthen are back to receive the kick for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. One thing I don't understand so far is, you know, they've tried the squib kick and everything, but all three kickoffs so far have gone right to Dawson. Yeah. You'd think they'd kick away from him with the two deep safeties back there. And they're not, and, and Georgia Southern really isn't doing much uh, disguising uh, which side Dawson is going to be on the, on the field, so we'll have to wait and see. For Appalachian, they're at Marshall next week, a home date on the 28th to UTC, and then in November at VMI, home to Western Carolina, and then at the Citadel to wrap up the regular season on the 18th. For Georgia Southern, after today's game, they will host the Citadel. They will visit ETSU, home to Furman, away at Liberty, and you'll see that game on many of these same stations, and then they'll take on VMI to end the regular season. And just like you called it, here's Dexter Dawson again. And man, does he have a lot of room. Dawson to midfield, still on his feet, knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. And how about that for a momentum builder to start the second half? Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, that is a big start. And this really, this is the game right here. It, it very well could be the game as far as the momentum goes. There's not a whole lot here except great block. And look at the, the blocks on the inside there. And Dawson just, he does a great job of setting up the blocks. You know, that, that really wasn't a great block there by, by uh, number 32, Marlo Worthen, but, but what Dawson did was use him to get in the way. But right here is the most important drive of the game for Georgia Southern and defensively for Appalachian State. All right. 85, Dexter Dawson with the big return. First down, handoff right up the middle. And that is Holmes. Chad Holmes takes it just shy of the 35-yard line, down to the 36. Holmes now on officially nine carries and 50 yards. The leading ball carrier for Georgia Southern. Gain of six, second down and four. And a touchdown by Georgia Southern on this drive, and it's anybody's ball game. Holmes again. And I think he's got the first down, close to the 38-yard line. Depends on the spot. Vintage Eagle offense right there. Nothing pretty about either one of those two plays, but uh, they, they've got they've got very close to first down yardage out of it. There it is. It's the triple option. You see number 13 there uh, coming in to make the play. Can't find his name. There you go, Cliff. Way to go. But uh, you know the quarterback just reads it, gives it to Chad Holmes up inside because he cannot get in to make that play. That's 13 Marvin Hodge playing the option. He was just too far outside to make the play on the fullback. Chain Gang is on the field. Can't get much closer than that. And 
it is a first down. And there are quite a few blue-clad Georgia Southern fans who made the trip. And it was quite a trip from Statesboro. Literally and figuratively. Weather's been warm in Georgia. Robinson the pitch, Worthen. And the blocking breaks down. Worthen had no way to go on that. Robinson stretched out as far as he could, make the pitch. But the Mountaineer secondary, as you, as you see after the pitcher, there is absolutely nowhere for Worthen to go. He couldn't get around his freshman slot back, Tobias Steverson. And that really bogged the play down, and it broke down for a loss of a yard. It's second down and 11. Ball at the 34-yard line. Just underway, second half. Appalachian and Georgia Southern. Southern Conference football on Sports South. Glad you could join us. Holmes tries to batter his way behind the right side of the line, and not much is going on. A minimal gain. Give him a pickup of two. The only thing going on on that side was Dexter Coakley. And when oh, he's yeah. going on, not a whole lot happens offensively. He was over there to make the play on the last play on the option of the sideline with Jamie Coleman. The man has a nose for the football. Third down and nine at the 34-yard line. Robinson wants to pass. Pump fake, sends it down the middle. The pass is nearly intercepted at the goal line. The pass falls incomplete. That was Matt Stevens, who nearly had the interception. So here's a good throw by Robinson, but you watch him. He's got the double post route coming in from the left side of the field. What he never sees the whole time he's looking is Matt Stevens from the from the right side of your camera there falling in. There's no one out here to hold him in coverage on the sideline. He read it well and almost came up with the intercept. Andre Rogers was open momentarily. And now we've got a field goal attempt, and this will be an attempt of 50 yards. Meng on the way short and to the left it would have been his career best so Georgia Southern is unable to convert that terrific kickoff return by Dexter Dawson into any points Appalachian State will have the football when we return to Boone in just a moment Promotional consideration provided by U.S. Air with more than 5,000 flights a day. U.S. Air is the airline with over 5,000 flights a day and is the airline that's connecting over 200 business centers nationwide. That's U.S. Air. 21 to 10, Appalachian with the football. 12.29 to go in the third, along with Cliff Stout, Dave Weekly in Boone, North Carolina. Glad you joined us today on Sports South. It's been a hard-hitting game, a game of long, time-consuming drives. Georgia Southern took the opening kickoff and drove to the 30-yard line of Appalachian before they misfired on a long field goal attempt. This is the first possession of the second half for the Apps. Not much going there for Damon Scott. You know, you talk about momentum. They got it there at the end of the first half, then that big kick return. Nothing will kill that momentum and that, that good feeling you have about yourself than going three and out, especially in a situation where you really need it. Now they feel they're, they're right back in the hole they were in uh, 25 minutes ago. Scott, one-yard gain, 18 carries, 101 yards, and a touchdown thus far this afternoon. From the eye. Handoff goes up the middle. This is Lance, and Lance slips a tackle. He's still on his feet. He's across the 50 and down to the Georgia Southern 46. Great running by Lance. He's so explosive getting through there. Shows some good speed. Once he gets into the secondary, good power, good balance. Shows why he's averaging almost five yards a carry on the season. Hits the hole quick. Sees the running lane. Can't arm tackle him. He, he, he's not going to be denied here. Finally dragged down from behind by Rob Stock. Baldwin lands. That's a 21-yard gainer. And a first down for Appalachian. Backs are split this time as Satterfield goes from the shotgun for the first time in the second half. Damon Scott tries to turn the corner. Does so. Gets out of bounds at the 37-yard line. And, you know, that was a... 
a relatively slow developing play, but it was quietly effective, a gain of seven yards. It didn't look like there was much there at first, but just good seal box by the uh, interior line. Number 97, Edward Thomas can't get there. And, and, and the way the play developed, Eric Thigpen was even screened off. He couldn't get there to do anything but run him out of bounds after a nine yard gain. Second down and two, give him a pickup of eight. Clyde Everett is split out wide to the right. Satterfield, the handoff. Scott driving off the right side between the tackles over the 35, down to the 34-yard line, and another Appalachian first down. They're looking uh, like, about like they did on the opening drive of the game, just very efficient. They're, they're not just picking out the thing they do the best and running it over and over and over again. They're, they're working the ball all over the football field. Let's go, D. Keep them going, Marco. Georgia Southern, their leading tackler today. Linebacker Chris Smith was unable to start today because of injuries. Chad Nybert is in, in his place. And boy, Georgia Southern could use Smith right now. Here's the pitch back to Scott, trying to short side, driving, driving. Finally, the whistle blows as he reaches the 31-yard line for a gain of two. And that was the right tackle, Lee Brooks, who wrapped up Scott and finally dragged him down after a short gain. Lee, Lee Brooks is having a heck of a football game here. He makes a good play. He, in fact, he and Sean Clark are having a great one-on-one -on -one battle with each other. There's Scott coming up in there, also being hit there by big old number nine. If I, everybody's flying in trying yeah. to hit him there. But you know, his feet just kept going all the time, even with five big bodies on top of him. The feet were still going, trying to move forward. Yeah, that was Ronald Sloan, number 90, the freshman from Augusta, Georgia, Richmond Academy in there, helping Brooks on the stop. It's second down and eight, ball resting at the 32-yard line. Scott, the own, only setback, Satterfield. And, you know, Appalachian tried that in the first half. I thought it looked like a broken play. It worked in the first half for about 10 yards. But this time, Georgia Southern did not buy the fake. They were there waiting for the senior quarterback. Well, sometimes those things work early in the game when a defense is all hyped up and they're pursuing like crazy, trying to make the big play. They've seen it one time. Now they know that they're supposed to stay at home and take care of their, their lane in case they do run that play again. One of the keys to the early season success for Georgia Southern has been their turnover ratio. They've got uh, one of the best turnover margins in 1AA college football at plus 2.2, but turnovers are even today, one apiece. It's third down and six. Georgia Southern would love to get the big turnover here. Satterfield steps up in the pocket. Sends it across the middle. Dangerous pass. Tried to slip it to his split end, Otis Smith. And the pass was incomplete. And Cliff, you know, as an old quarterback, when you're run, not, not specifically old quarterback, but as a former quarterback, <laughs> when you're rolling one way and then turning and trying to throw across the middle the other way, a lot of bad things can happen. Well, that's why I never, ever did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I wish I had a nickel for every time. I, did. <laughs> I tell you what, it's so tempting, though. You're running across there. You can't see the coverage coming back. You look and you see Otis Smith. He's waving his hands. And not only do you think he's open, obviously he thinks he's open. Or he wouldn't be raising his hands. And we, it's, it's tempting. We've got an official timeout on the field. No, Appalachian has called the timeout. 9.18 to go as they talk over this fourth down situation. And Boone we will be back to Kid Brewer Stadium in just a moment. Back in Boone, Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 21 to 10. Appalachian came into play today, 5 and 0 overall, 2 and 0 in the Southern Conference. It's fourth down and six. And rather than bring Jay Scott onto the field to Jay Sutton rather onto the field to attempt a long field goal, this would be a 47-yarder. They're going for it. Scott is the lone setback. Leatherwood in motion. Satterfield running, running, finally throwing. Out of bounds. Pass goes incomplete, and the ball turns over on downs. Satterfield held the ball as long as he could, finally pulled the trigger, got it to Kendrick Hall, but he was out of bounds. 
Well, this happens sometimes. You know, as a quarterback, I always like throwing to my left. It was easier to get the shoulder square. Sometimes a quarterback rolling to his right has a tendency not to square up and just lets the ball tail out there. On the other hand, Kendrick Hall looked like he had room to keep his feet there and make the catch. Instead, he jumped up in the air and his momentum carried him onto the big white stripe. Great camera work on that replay. Good shot. So Georgia Southern will take over at the 30-yard line. Got a little problem with the 30-second clock. Yeah. Looks like they got that straightened out. Still plenty of time to go in this game, Cliff. 21-10, 9.07 to go in the third. Kenny Robinson back under center for his second possession here in the second half. We saw Charles Bostic also at quarterback in the first half of action. Chad Holmes gets the handoff, and there is nothing happening. The Appalachian State defense, the black-clad apps, are there to make the stop. Amongst the tacklers, the left end, Sean Elliott. Here you just see nothing exciting right there. You know, even off camera, you don't see it. But Kenny Robinson, one of the most important parts when you're running the option is for the quarterback to carry out his fakes. Because sometimes you just bring that fullback up the middle, and if the safety's following the quarterback out there, that's what leaves the guy wide open running down the middle of the field. Robinson, late pitch. Gets it to Dexter Dawson. Uh, Dawson with a nice spin across the 35 up to the 36-yard line for a gain of six. It'll be third down and four. And if you're Tim Stowers, you've got to get the ball in the hands of Dexter Dawson. He's your big play guy. Well, as much as you can. I mean, he's carried the ball 27 times this year for 182 yards. He's got a 44-yard run. He's a team's leading receiver, one of the top kick return. I mean, you got to. He's like Tim Brown. That's that's your yeah. big play guy. Uh, you get the ball in his hands as many times as you can. Yeah, I think that's a real good comparison. They both do the same kinds of things for their teams. Tim Brown, the Heisman Trophy winner with the uh, Oakland Raiders, and Dexter Dawson, the big play guy for Georgia Southern. Robinson back to pass. The pass is complete. It's a first down across the 40 up to the 44-yard line. Maurice Bing from Savannah Groves High School makes the catch. Bing does a nice job. As you'll see here on the replay, good throw by Robinson, and Bing comes back for the football. So he's moving away from the defender there and has a, a chance to slip him. Matt Stevens just goes sliding by. Dexter Coakley comes in and finishes up, but it's a little too late. They got a first down. All right, now Charles Bostic is in the game. Bostic is in the game at the quarterback spot, and it's a quarterback draw. Got tangled up at the line of scrimmage. Falls ahead for a gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Georgia Southern at their own 45-yard line, down to seven minutes to go in the third. Appalachian leads by 11, 21-10. We're just trying to set up the quarterback draw. Not a whole lot there. The offensive line's got to sell that pass protection and, and let the defense get some penetration so there's a lane to run in. There's none of that there. Worthen is a wing on the right side this time and now comes in motion. And the handoff goes to Holmes. Holmes hits in there quickly across the 45 and up to the 48-yard line. You know, Cliff, you were a bit critical of Georgia Southern's uh, quarterbacking tandem switching off in the first half. At least in the first half, they switched off on, on possessions. Now we've seen a possession where Robinson has started the possession and Bostic has come in in the midst of it. Right, right after two first downs. I, you know, that, that baffles me. But again, they've been very successful with it. We talked about the great week the two of them had last week, combining for 11 for 14, 162 yards, plus Bostic added 117 yards rushing. Obviously, uh, Coach Stowers knows what he's doing, but uh, it, cr it creates some confusion. Now look at here, you're in the middle of a drive, you got a new signal caller in there, and uh, there's some mix-up with your formation. The play clock had ticked down to one, and Bostic was able to get the timeout. They'd rather burn the timeout than lose the five yards. 6.01 to go in the third, Appalachian leads by 11. Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 21 to 10. We're down to six minutes to go in the third. A, a critical possession for the Eagles. They'd like to get a score and get this down into a one possession ball game to take the lead if they could. And there's Charles Bostic coming back onto the field. We mentioned in the first half, granted an unusual sixth year of eligibility by the NCAA because of serious knee injuries that caused him to miss two entire seasons. 
following the timeout. Third down and seven. Bostic lost the handle. Ball is loose. The apps say they have it, and they do. Appalachian has recovered the fumble. Jason Hatcher from Clearwater, Florida. Countryside High comes up with the football. Well, that just makes you wonder that much more when you change quarterbacks in and out. You know, for the center, it's different, too. Everybody, every quarterback, he sounds different calling the signals. He's got a different pace it's, it's, as to how he calls the cadence. His hands feel a little bit different underneath there. And, uh, I mean, you want to have a familiar pair of hands yeah. here, center. Yeah, it really looked at, at that instance, Cliff, at, that Bostic never really had control of the exchange. Center's fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Dual tight ends, two tight ends. Jumbo looks. Satterfield on the keeper. First down and more down to the 31 yard line. That's a gain of 15 on the first down play for Satterfield. And Satterfield has got a shot at maybe 100 ground yards. Unofficially, we've got him at. 70 yards now rushing. Here's another look. I, I like the way they run this this sweep option, whatever you want to call it. And you got Aldwin Lance out there in front of the quarterback blocking. You always run it to the wide side of the field, so you've got an acre of turf to set the play up in. And when you've got Damon Scott as your pitch man, you got to respect him. Critical time for the Eagle defense. They've got to keep Appalachian out of the end zone if they can. Satterfield, the pitch to Scott, and oh, he's got lots of room. And that's going to be a gain of 11 down to the 19-yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines and Ted Burns. Ted? Well, guys, I, I know you'd like to know that it was some real strategy and why they pulled the quarterbacks and switched them at that particular time of the drive, but that wasn't it at all. The strap on the shoulder pads that laces them together snapped. It was an equipment problem that made them pull the quarterback out at that point. All right, Ted, good job. You're right on top of it. 5.26 to go. Appalachian's got the ball. They're driving. Nose of the football inside the Eagle 20-yard line. Aldwin Lance just came off the field, shaken up just a bit for Appalachian. Here's the handoff to Scott, and he bangs down to the 15. That's another five. And that's a good pickup on first down for Damon Scott. Scott now with 125 yards rushing this afternoon. Got a little trap there. You've got uh, Kenny Barbie pulling over, and uh, the hole was so big, he didn't have any block when he got there. Yeah. And Bulmer, the tight end, with a nice block as well. The second down in a short six. 15-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Lance is back in there, and he has wrapped up and... The Eagles needed a stop on defense, and they got one right there. Marco Bradham was there to make the stop. Also in there for Georgia Southern to make the tackle. Huey Huff. Huey Hunt. I'll tell you what, Huey's huge. He's 5'11", 269. Also out of the defensive line and linebackers, he's the only one that won't be coming back next year. They're loaded up with sophomores and juniors. So up front, they're going to be solid again next year. Of course, in their secondary, they lose three out of their four starters. Yeah, that's a real good point. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit more in detail in just a moment after this big third down play. Satterfield, the pitch, Scott, and once again, it's defensed well by Georgia Southern. They are there to shut it down. Derek Reeves from his left end position was there along with Marco Bradham. Now last year, Georgia Southern missed the playoffs going six and five, and the pressure was on Tim Stowers a bit down in Statesboro, but they're a young, talented football team. They're gonna be good for a while. Derek Reeves makes a heck of a play right there. He forces Satterfield to pitch, and then he turns around and makes the tackle on Damon Scott. Give him an eagle sticker for his helmet. They don't do that down here, do they? No, but maybe they should start. They're looking a lot like Penn State. <laughs> Jay Sutton is on to attempt the field goal. 10 of 13 this season. This will be a 31-yard attempt, and it is good. That's a big, that's a big kick. It makes it a 14-point game now. Puts him up by two touchdowns. You know, I have an inquisitive mind. So, okay, I understand he came out because his shoulders shoulder pad strap broke but he was out for three plays and also there was a timeout called I mean he had the team moving and he was obviously ready to go back in the game after just one play so we still have questions that need to be answered 
Well, that was a bit of a moral victory, I felt, for the Georgia Southern defense. They were able to keep Appalachian out of the end zone. It's still a two-possession game for Georgia Southern. The lead now is 24 to 10. The biggest lead of the ball game this afternoon. Appalachian led at one point 21 to 3. Georgia Southern was able to get a touchdown in the final seconds of the first half to make it 21 to 10 at the break. The three-point kick by Jay Sutton, the only points thus far here in the third quarter. It's 24 to 10. It's, it really is developing a lot like last week's game against Furman. They jump up 35 nothing, and they, they've, they score their 35th point with 11.05 left in the second quarter, and they only managed two field goals the rest of the game and hang on to win 41-28. Even though they sacked Brandon Bonaventure at 11 times and had three early turnovers, they really didn't do much in the last three quarters of that football game. So this is kind of a character test for them that they keep playing and play a whole four quarters. If they're going to, if they're going to be ranked number two in the nation, and uh, maybe you know, right now it looks like they may have a battle coming up with McNeese State, the number one team in the nation. Right. Somewhere down the road, they've got to play four quarters. Hey, you know, one of the big keys to their victory last week, Appalachian at Furman was the play of Gerard Hardy, the backup quarterback who stepped in for Satterfield when he was unable to answer the bell because of yet of a bad knee. Short kick, worth it. Spinning across the 30 into the 32-yard line. Another good return. Uh, Georgia Southern has been able to make some big plays on their kickoff returns. In fact, Dexter Dawson took the opening, or rather the third quarter kickoff into Appalachian territory. There's your scoring drive. Five plays, 33 yards in under three minutes. Sutton converts the 31-yard field goal. Well, he got the ball out to the 31-yard line. Really wasn't a very long return because of the short kick short high kick to get the coverage down there, but the most impressive thing is they, they finally kicked it away from Dexter Dawson. We're closing in on the fourth quarter. Time for Georgia Southern to get something going offensively if they can. Robinson is back in there. He's got a man wide open. Couldn't get him with the ball. Now Robinson is able to elude one rusher and sail the ball out of bounds. Incomplete. Flag is down. We could be looking at a late hit, but he had Maurice Bing wide open. Well, Maurice Bing, he's going to be talking about that on the seven-hour bus ride all the way home tonight. You can't... I don't I don't know if you can see it there or not. But running, there he is. Look at Bing in the top of your camera. There's nobody within 20 yards of him. And it's just a little slip on the wet turf by Robinson that threw him off balance where he couldn't make that throw. He did a great job to fight, fight off defenders and throw the ball away. And it looks as if the penalty will be against the Eagles. They may have called it for grounding. There was nobody out there. No, I've never seen him throw a grounding penalty when they put the ball on the, on the bench. Official grounding. Lost a down. It'll be second down. I've never seen a grounding call when a quarterback throws the ball over the bench. Even when everybody in the world knows he's grounding the football. Well, you can I've see, never seen that. You can see Tim Stowers' reaction on the Georgia Southern sideline. Very unhappy with that call. It moves the line of scrimmage back to the 21-yard line. It'll be second down and 20. Of course, that's loss of down, intentional grounding, a big penalty. That goes from being a 69-yard touchdown to Bing to second and 20. Robinson back to pass again, slips it out to Wortham. He gathered it in and was able to get back to the line of scrimmage and maybe pick up a yard. He did a good job, Cliff, to catch that ball. I think that would have been ruled a lateral if he hadn't pulled it in. Yeah, he definitely threw that uh, backwards, probably about a yard, yard and a half. Uh, good catch by Wortham. If it sails over his head, if it sails over his head, they lose eight yards. Joe DiBernardo, the linebacker from Christopher Columbus High in Miami, was there to close down on the ball carrier after Jamie Coleman made the initial hit for Appalachian. It's third and 20. And Robinson turns the corner. Dangerous pass. Back across the field. Complete first down. Dexter Dawson, 43-yard line. And Robinson put that one right on the money. Oh, Robinson made a great throw there. Jeff Green in hot pursuit with a big pass rush. You'll see him coming in from the right side of your camera. There he is on a pass game. Oh, he stopped right there. If he keeps going, he might have had it for the sack. Robinson makes a great throw, throwing back across the field into the middle, just like we talked about you should do. <laughs> when, you, when you got Dexter Dawson out there, you can. <laughs> well, Robinson, the lefty, was rolling to his left and got some mustard on that ball and got it to Dawson for the first down. First and ten. 
Georgia Southern at their own 43. They're back in business offensively. Robinson's got some room to run, and now he does tuck it and go. He's into Appalachian territory. Got a block on the corner. Finally dragged down at the 39-yard line. It's a tremendous athletic move by Robinson. To, he got away from one, out of the grasp of one player in the pocket. Broke a tackle about uh, 8, 10 yards downfield. You see him right here trying to set up. He's got to step up in the pocket, which he does nicely. Gets away from Marvin Hodge. Gets a block there from his right guard, Jamie Glover, on Hodge again. There he gets away from De Bernardo. Tell you what, fine play. Gain of 19. Hand off to Holmes. Holmes nearly broke it. He got across the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. Well, you can see why Chad Holmes is so dangerous from that flex bone offensive look when they slip into the fullback. Just a couple of blocks. That's all he needs, is he, and he is into the secondary very quickly. Well, he's a big, strong guy again. You know, 5'9", 201. He's got his first three or four steps are incredibly quick, and you, you've really got to be on your toes there if you're an inside linebacker, or, the, or he's one on one with a safety before you know it. That's a gain of six for Holmes. We're down to 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Holmes again churning across the 30 down to the 29 yard line and very close to a first down. Well, Georgia Southern has definitely moved the football here in the third quarter, but they have no points to show for it. They trail Appalachian 24 to 10. We will measure for a first down and most likely another play will not be run before the end of the third quarter. We figure both teams should be able to run the ball. Appalachian State's third in Division I AA with 293 yards rushing a game. Georgia Southern's got about just under 250 a game. They're ranked 14th. The only thing is, Appalachian State's rushing defense is ranked eighth in the country, only giving up 89.4, so they're not having their best day today. And that is just shy of a first down. And while the yard marker says fourth down, I think it's third down. I think you're right. Little the yard much. marker says fourth, but I got to believe it's <coughs> third down. The, st the clock is stopped, and I, I think they're going to get this situation rectified. I think this will be third down. And we do have an official's timeout on the field to make sure we get this right which down it is I believe it's third down but the yard marker says it's fourth and you can see the Appalachian coaches they want it to be fourth down <laughs> you can see Jerry Moore standing there this will be interesting we know from the Alabama Arkansas game we got some crews out there can't count to 12 right but now we got them are having trouble counting to four <laughs> It's a bad math year for well, college even, officials. Even if uh, Georgia Southern does lose a down and they go to fourth down, yeah, there you see Jerry Moore getting the word on the left-hand side of the screen. It is just the length of the football. Seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. Appalachian 24, Georgia Southern 10. Now, in a situation like this, are they allowed to check with the press box? I mean, obviously, there's people up here keeping the play-by-play -play stats that we see after the game. Okay, and they've just changed it. Now it is third down. It is officially third down. We knew that. Sure we did. They need to put the clock back to 12 seconds, too, because that's where it was when they came up with the line of scrimmage yeah. last time. Well, apparently, we will get another playoff before the end of the third. Robinson has got the first down. See how easy that was? And now we've got a, the clock is stopped as they move the chains. But Georgia Southern uh, is moving. 
They have moved the football here in the third quarter. They have not produced any points, but they will begin the fourth quarter in great shape with a first down at the 28-yard line. And that is going to do it for the third quarter. Who controls the fourth quarter will win this football game. Appalachian State 24, Georgia Southern 10. We're going to the final period. Stay with us. Set to go the fourth quarter in Boone. Promotional consideration provided by U.S. Air today. U.S. Air is the airline with over 5,000 flights a day. U.S. Air is the airline that connects over 200 business centers nationwide. Along with Cliff Stout, Dave Weekly, and Boone, Kid Brewer Stadium on the campus of Appalachian State University. Unbeaten Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 24-10 as we go to the fourth, but the Eagles are driving. First and 10 at the ASU 28. Kenny Robinson, the quarterback, wants to pass. The pass is complete. Maurice Bing has the football and is knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Minimal gain, a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Kind of ironic that U.S. Air is one of our sponsors today when both these teams love to run the football. <laughs> there you go. But they, they do have to travel to play. I That's guess. right. I'll tell you what, not much of a gain there, just a three-yard gain, but one heck of a throw by Kenny Robinson. He comes off to, the, to uh, his receiver, Bing, at the last minute and fires a pass across his body to his left with getting hit at all at the same time. Robinson, wow, how he was able to elude those tacklers, I'll never know, but he actually turned that play that looked like was going to be a two-yard loss into about a three-yard gain. It's going to be third down and four. It's amazing how he could feel the heat coming from behind him. I thought he was going to try to make the pitch to Dexter Dawson, but somehow he felt the heat coming backside there from Marvin Hodge and was able to tuck the football away and not pitch. I think if he pitches it, Hodge knocks it down. Got to believe trailing at by 14. This is four down territory. It's third down and four. Handoff right up the middle. Lots of room for Holmes. He's got the first down and more. Shaken and bacon all the way down to the 13-yard line. And a Georgia Southern first down. Again, Holmes just pops it up there real hard. You'll see some good hard running. Now watch Tony Perry come in and try to tackle the football, try to strip the football away. Watch as they're going down. He's tugging at the ball yeah. in his arms. Not a bad idea. Yeah, but watch Holmes. He's got both hands on that ball. <laughs> Taking care of business. First and 10 from the 13 for Georgia Southern. Robinson. Across the 10 down to the 8-yard line. And you can uh, feel a bit of a momentum switch. Really, uh, the, the focus of the game started to switch to Georgia Southern midway in the third period. Well, if, if Georgia Southern wants to stay with their game plan, they've got to come away with seven points here. They, uh, if they don't score a touchdown here, then they've got to start throwing the football. And, of course, they did it well at the end of the first half, but it's documented that's not what they like to do. Rodgers and Bing split out wide to the left. Holmes banging down to close to the one-yard line. And that's another first down. Georgia Southern has got the ball first and goal outside the one. That's impressive. A great block by the center, Robert Moore. And your, and your guards, Hadley and Glover, open up a huge hole up the middle. And Chad Holmes, again, just hits it so quick. And when he hits the safety head on, he's going to pick up another four or five yards before he hits the dirt. The senior from Griffin, Georgia, has been a big key in this drive that began in the third quarter. Robinson on the long count. Oh, to the goal up. line, just shy of the touchdown. Inside the one, it'll be second down and goal at the half yard line for Georgia Southern. Still a lot of time to go. Clock moving, 12.30 to go in the game. Robinson here looked like he was going to pitch for a second. No, nope, he's tucking it all the way. Just tried to make the fake on the pitch and get it himself. Got down. He's got about two feet of real estate to go. Remember, at one point, Appalachian led this game 21-3. to It's 24-10 right now. Second and goal. Robinson. No way. And apparently he was stopped shy of the goal line. But look how close the nose of the football is to the goal line itself. 
That's how close. And now, Appalachian with their defensive stand on second down, getting a little bit more crowd support. Fans making some noise. Jumbo look this time for Georgia Southern. If he sneaks it, watch him go off the guards. Robinson, touchdown. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. You run the quarterback sneak like that, you're going to find a hole because as soon as you see that quarterback moving forward, not looking to fake or hand off, you're going to just cram everything down there by the center and guards, and that's the second time they've done it. Last time they did it, right before the end of the first half, going left, hits time he goes right. So Kenny Robinson scores his second rushing touchdown of the day, and now the all-important extra point. Shout out to Hot Rod and Biz A and the mother down rugby his ass. And Georgia Southern is right back in this ball game. It's 24-17 with a world of time to go. 11:32 to go in the fourth. First points of the second half for Georgia Southern, and it came with a price. Guard Jamie Glover is down on the field. The junior from Soperton, Georgia. We'll check on the injury when we return to Boone and Kid Brewer Stadium. But we've got a ball game, Southern Conference style, 24-17, Appalachian leading. Appalachian leads Georgia Southern, but the Eagles are taking the momentum in this game, 24-17. The injured player down on the turf for Georgia Southern it continues to get attention. That is Jamie Glover, and it does not look good. And you can see that it appears they're looking at that left knee. The announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by the Southern Conference. Any use rebroadcast of this telecast this afternoon without the express written consent of the Southern Conference and Sports South is prohibited. Why don't we take this time? We're looking at Jamie Glover down there. I hope he's all right. Gosh, you just hate to see the guys grab their knee. It's yeah. just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how I did it. 25 years total playing football, never had anybody touch my knees. Wow. I think it was fear. I always picked up my feet when anybody got close. Al, but you were the classic but, drop back passer, Cliff. Well, a lot of it had to do with letting Bradshaw play most of the time, there you too. Go. <laughs> but, Let's take another look at the touchdown that made this a one possession game. Robinson, the quarterback. Here you go. Look at everybody piling inside on the sneak, and all he does is just kind of slide down the line until he feels a hole, and then he turns in. Look at everybody. Their heads are turned inside. These, these six guys in the middle of the screen, they, they don't even know where he is right now because they're just jumping on the center's head. I tell you what, this is my first trip to uh, Boone, North Carolina, and to Appala Appalachian State University. This is one gorgeous campus, especially this time of year. What a, it makes you feel like football. The weather's yeah. kind of cleared up now. There's no more wind blowing, no more rain in the area. The leaves are turning colors. This is, take, it's taking my mind off my Indians getting beat last night in extra innings. A big game tonight. There's the kick. Coleman from the three. Shoots through, Jamie Coleman, look out! Coleman finally run out of bounds at the 34-yard line, and Appalachian needed a big play, and Jamie Coleman provided it with a spectacular kickoff return. Well, we sat on this side of the field watching Georgia Southern and, and uh, Dexter Dawson do such a magnificent job on blocking. Here's a great job of blocking by the Mountaineers, and Coleman does the rest with his speed. you got Jay Sutton, not Jay Sutton. You've got uh, Eric Mang diving, trying to make the stop, and Coleman, there's just no place for him to cut back. He wanted to cut back inside, but he could feel the pursuit coming, so he just got as much as he could. That's a 62-yard kickoff return. Satterfield on the option, keeping across the 30 and down to the 28-yard line. That's a pickup of seven on first down. Still a lot of time in this game, 11-11 to go. It's a one-possession game now for Georgia Southern, but Appalachian is driving. Here you see the last play. It's kind of a quarterback rollout or sweep, and... 
Satterfield just feels the hole inside and tries to cut back across the grain and ma makes a nice game. Didn't Jerry Moore tell us before the game that special teams would be one of the keys? Scott twisting his way down to the 25 near the first down marker. You don't really need to score a touchdown here. I mean, you want to, obviously, when you're down <clears throat> this close, but just get in, in 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 close enough for a field goal, and it puts you up by 10, and it forces Georgia Southern to have to score twice. Scott doesn't have much of a hole there. Gets down uh, about a yard short of the first down. That was Kareem Young, the reserve fullback, leaves the lineup. Alban Lance is back in there. Appalachian operates from the eye on third and less than a yard. Satterfield has it. Brought down by Marco Bradham, but not before he picked up the first down. Satterfield, we, we talked earlier in the first half about him being a leader. He's just a smart football player. He doesn't try to do anything fancy. He knows he needs a yard. Maybe he could have pitched it and picked up four, but he knew he could pick up two or three on his own. So he takes the sure thing, keeps the drive alive. It's first and ten for Appalachian at the Georgia Southern 23-yard line. Inside of ten minutes to go now. Scott takes it to the 20 before he is brought down. Chris Smith is in the game for Georgia Southern. We didn't anticipate seeing him today because of injuries. And speaking of which, let's go down to Ted Byrne for an injury update. Well, Dave, there you see Glover in your uh, picture, and uh, he's up walking around. He wears a brace on that right knee to begin with, and it was the left, excuse me, on the left knee, and it was the right knee that they were looking at. I think he got caught up in the turf. He heard something pop. He got scared. They brought him out. They looked at both knees. They took the brace off. They uh, Both knees, he agreed, felt the same. They've uh, retaped the brace and uh, put a little tape on the other knee, and he looks like he's ready to go. All right. Thank you, Ted. Satterfield wanted the pitch, finally did pitch, and the moment Scott got the ball, the ball arrived, and Bradham arrived milliseconds later and brought him down a gain of only a yard. It's third down and seven. Now you're to that point in the game where a play like that makes you a little bit nervous. Here is he wanted to pitch early, it wasn't there, then he he gets dangerously close to the defender. Maybe he yeah, did look almost like a forward pass. We'll give him a completion, help that rating out. You know, I, I think he, he may not have had control of the football. That may have been the reason he double clutched there. Big third down. Georgia Southern needs a stop here if they can get it. Third and six from the 20. Appalachian looking to pad their lead if they can. Satterfield going left, lets it go into the flat. Pass is caught, first down. Kevin Burt makes the catch, and Appalachian picks up a clutch third down. I mentioned earlier when he when he made a throw rolling to his right, or when Robinson did for the Eagles, I think it's an easier throw for the quarterback rolling left, and Satterfield makes a fine throw. Burton makes sure he catches the ball, slides out of bounds, and he's got a first down. And again, they're in, they're, they're in a position to go back up by 14 points. Clutch call by Appalachian's offensive coordinator, Rob Best. 24-17, Satterfield. Late pitch, ball's on the turf. Appalachian's after it, but Scott is back, but not before the ball finally rests back at the 22-yard line. That's a loss of 12 yards. Well, I just mentioned this a couple plays before. At this point in the game, you want to protect the football. Oh, and that, that's the first mistake they've made on a pitch, but it could be very costly because now they're back. If they had to kick a field goal from right here, it would be a 39-40 yarder instead of a 28-27 yarder. They do so many other things so well with the football. You know, I'd be thinking more about protecting the football at this point. So now, following the loss of 12, make it 11, it's second down and 20. And Satterfield will operate from the shotgun. Three-step drop, quarterback draw. And he is back close to the original line of scrimmage to the 11. That's a gain of 10. So it's third down and around nine. 
another well-designed play. A lot of times on the quarterback draw, all you do is drop back and, and, and let the pass rush come upfield, and then you try to pick your hole. But the way they had a man in motion to make it look like he was there for protection, and along with Damon Scott, they actually led the blocking for Satterfield once he cracked that first wave of, of rushers. Yeah, Scott Satterfield got into the lineup last year in his junior season, started at, at quarterback the last seven games, led Appalachian into the playoffs uh, before they were losers in the semifinal round to Boise State. Satterfield dragged down from behind. That's a good open field tackle by Chris Smith. Smith didn't start the game, but he's finishing it big time for Georgia Southern. He comes up and makes a great play there. For a second, I thought Satterfield was going to try to pitch it again. You watch him here on the replay. He starts to extend that arm to make the pitch to Damon Scott, but thinks better of that idea here real soon. So Jay Sutton is on to attempt his second field goal of the second half. It'll come from the right hash mark. This will be a 29-yard attempt on the way and good. Jay Sutton with a clutch 29-yard field goal. The apps extend their lead once again to 10 points. It's 27 to 10. Appalachian leads by 10, 27, 17. Five and a half minutes to go. Following that terrific kickoff return by Jamie Coleman, a return of 62 yards. Appalachian is able to convert that into a big right, field goal. They back. needed the points. There's a good panoramic view of Kid Brewer Stadium here in Boone. You really don't see it, but on the other side of the field, opposite the press box, they're going through a stadium renovation over on that side to increase seating capacity. There it is. You can see where the new stands are going to be. And when they're finished over there, it'll pretty much be a mirror image of what we have on this side of the stadium. So it'll be a nice little uh, semi-bold stadium with the mountain down here to our right. Here's a new strategy for Appalachian. They try to pooch kick, and Warthen is still able to get a good return up to the 34-yard line. But you know, when they expand the capacity of this stadium, where are people going to park? There's not enough parking now. <laughs> <laughs> Have to stay 15 miles down the road yeah. and bus in like I did last night. Yeah. Scoring drive for Appalachian, a dozen plays. 23 yards. Of course, that was set up by the big kickoff return by Coleman, but it took nearly six minutes off the clock. That's a key. We're down to five and a half minutes to go. Appalachian on defense, fired up after that field goal. Georgia Southern needs points, obviously. They trail by 10. Holmes on the carry, up to the 37-yard line. Minimal gain, though. It'll be second down and seven. And here's where you get into that problem. Cliff with that flex bone. You need points quickly. Uh, you, you know, you, you, you're really kind of past the point of trying to soften up the middle of the defense. You've got to, you've got two scores to get. You've got to move that ball. Right. They, they need to be in the shotgun like they were at the end of the first half. It's five minutes left now in the ball game. They, they need a touchdown and a field goal. They're not going to get it that quick. Going with the triple option. Robinson, the lefty, completes the pass. Marlo Worthen up to the 40-yard line. It's going to be third down and five, and the clock continues to run. We're down to 4.40 to go in the game. Both teams with two timeouts remaining here in the second half. Here's about the only effect we've had of the weather today. Several times here you see Worthen slip. Guys have tried to make that cutback and pick up extra yardage, and, and their feet have slipped out from under. We've seen it happen to the Georgia Southern quarterbacks a few times. Other than that, the weather hasn't been a factor. Now Robinson has to burn a timeout. There were five seconds left to go on the play clock, and that's a critical use of a timeout. And while Kenny Robinson and the brain trust of the Georgia Southern Eagles discuss it on the sidelines, we'll step aside from Kid Brewer for just a moment. Appalachian leads by 10. Appalachian leads Georgia Southern 27-17 with just over four minutes to go in the ball game. Georgia Southern has the football, and they burn the second of their three timeouts to discuss this critical third down play. Kenny Robinson under center. 
Holmes does not have it. It's going to be fourth down and two. Got to believe they've got to go for it here, Cliff. Oh, yeah, there's under four minutes left now in the game. They have to go for it here. They can't afford to punt. They can't afford to run the ball too many times. You figure if they run the ball right here, as soon as they set the chains, you see the big stop there by Dexter Coakley. Also, DiBernardo in on the hit. Game game could be over if we if uh, App, App State stops him here. This could be the biggest play of the ball game. Fourth and two. Got to have it. Robinson does. I don't think he's got it. No, he's short. He needed to get just shy of the 45-yard line. It, the, it will depend on the spot. I don't know. Ooh. Maybe with that spot, it's close. What. It that's is a, close. <laughs> that's a very, very favorable spot. So the ball game could be resting on this measurement. Will Appalachian stay undefeated? Will Georgia Southern move to five and one? A, he ever. got it. I'd like to see the replay on that to he see that got spot. That. Wow. There it is. Here's another look at the play. Oh, there's no way. Looked like he had the ball tucked down by his waist, and they gave him a good foot. Hand up right up the middle to Holmes, and the defense of Appalachian is right there to shut it down. Nowhere to go, and precious seconds continue to run off the clock. Mark Ivey from Collinsville, Virginia, is there to make the tackle. Clock continues to run inside of three minutes to go. Remember, Georgia Southern's down by 10. I, I, I don't understand this uh, running it right up the gut right about now. With, with, with a passing day like that, I, I'd let the kid throw if you want to win the football game. Dexter Dawson on the reverse. Needs some help. Still on his feet. And Mr. Everything, the linebacker, Dexter Coakley, was there to shut him down just shy of the first down marker. But Georgia Southern is in Appalachian territory at the 46-yard line. Coakley, watch him. 32 and black, stay home. Boy, just a, a great job by by Coakley bringing up Matt Stevens at least turns the play back in and then Coakley's there to make the arm tackle. Yeah, Stevens also a veteran player. He had that play smelled out as well. It's third down and a yard. Holmes has the first down. You know, when they, when, they, when they keep running football like that, if you're a defensive player like Matt Stevens on that reverse, you got to stay at home because you know if they're not throwing football, they've got to come up with some kind of other gimmick to make a big play. You're, you're under two minutes. And they're still in their first half mode. A minute 59 to go. Clock moving. The chains are set. Georgia Southern with only one timeout remaining from the shotgun. It's Robinson. Pass is complete to Dawson. Keeps his feet in the open. 30, 21 yard line. That's just, that's just a when you've got a weapon out there like Dexter Dawson too. I mean, there you saw he, he even slipped a little bit, but he's such a great athlete. And I, once he gets the football, anything can happen. We're sitting right next to the Georgia Southern coaching staff, and uh, they're finally up on their feet. They got the quarterback back in the shotgun. The kid's 12 for 13. They don't want to throw the football on, from the shotgun. From the Appalachian 21, Robinson, corner blitz, sends it to the end zone for Dawson, picked off, intercepted, Appalachian State. Clarence Sutton comes up with the huge interception, and that may just do it for the Aps. Great play by Sutton, making his second interception of the year. It was just an underthrow there by Robinson, one of the few bad passes. Well, he's only thrown one other incomplete besides that one, so it's one of two bad passes he's thrown today. It's really just an underthrow. Dexter Dawson has him beaten, but the underthrow allows Sutton to cut underneath and make the catch. Nice little hurdle move there. I'd have hurt my back doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence Sutton with the big, big interception for Appalachian State. Georgia Southern has only one time route remaining, so in essence, this ball game, for all intents and purposes, is over. Damon Scott carries it out to the 15-yard line, and Georgia Southern is opting not to use their timeout yet. 
In fact, they may not use their timeout at all. We're down to a minute to go in the game. One thing I wanted to get out before we leave the air today, we got some terrific cooperation from the sports information directors at both of these fine universities. Matt Rogers from Georgia Southern and one of my best friends, Rick Covington from Appalachian State. Thanks to both those guys. We really enjoyed our trip in here to Boone. 45 seconds to go. Scott is down to the 20-yard line, and now Georgia Southern will burn their last timeout. 40 seconds to go, and it looks like Appalachian is going to move to 6-0. and oh. What a great start for Jerry Moore and the Apps. Georgia Southern will drop to 4-2, and 2-2 two. Two and two in the Southern Conference. Well, and Kenny Robinson obviously thinking about that pass to the end zone in which he underthrew Dexter Dawson, and Clarence Sutton came up with the huge interception. Well, he, he's thrown the ball so well today, and... Uh, he, it's just a shame to see that happen because he had Dexter Dawson and uh, Clarence Sutton is just the uh, benefactor of the lone mistake so far today by Kenny Robinson. Uh, a couple a couple mistakes could be the difference in this game. You've got um, the interception by Francis Williams earlier in the game when he as soon as he intercepts the ball gets hit and fumbles and and uh, Bomer ends up with a touchdown out of it, and there you've got a, you've got Dawson wide open for the touchdown, and the underthrow costs him. So, Georgia Southern is is, uh, is right in there, except for a couple plays in this football game. Boy, does this set up a terrific game next week in Huntington, West Virginia. Appalachian undefeated, six and zero, taking on Marshall, five and one. The Thundering Herd at five and zero in the Southern Conference. The Southern Conference title could be hanging in the balance, not to mention one of the top spots in the 1AA polls. Satterfield appears to have the first down. Well, that'll be the battle of number two and number three, unless yeah. McNeese State loses this week. If they win, obviously they'll stay number one. Appalachian's been very consistent. They were number six in the preseason poll, moved up after the first weekend of action to number two, and they've been there for five solid weeks, and they didn't do anything to hurt their national ranking today. Very impressive performance by Appalachian State. They're a complete team. They've got veterans on offense, Cliff, big play guys on the defense, and a solid kicking game. That's a great combination. They, they really seem to have it all. And, uh, of course, my school's kind of out of the running this year. Youngstown started off number one in the polls. Now they don't even show up. Hey, give somebody else a chance. Yeah, They've had some terrific success. They really have. And it looks like uh, this football team could be next as we get the little Gatorade bath out there. I don't know which coach that was that got it. <laughs> I think it's a defensive coordinator. I do believe that would be... Uh, Ruffin McNeil, he just got a nice bath for shutting down this Georgia Southern offense today. Great football game. Yeah, very, very entertaining. Hard-hitting Southern Conference game. In fact, I think we're taking a look at two teams that could be on their way to the playoffs. Well, between these two teams and uh, Marshall, who App State has next week, it's uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of potential in this conference. You know, even look at Furman. Right. I mean, they could they could be, have a pretty decent football team. Turnovers have hurt them earlier this year, but uh, last week they played a very tough game against App State, even after they fell behind 35 nothing. 27 to 10 or 27 17 rather is the final. Appalachian State remains undefeated, but will return to Boone with some post game reaction in just a moment. Moment. Stay tuned. Well, a very productive afternoon for the Appalachian State Mountaineers. They remain undefeated. They go to 6-0 with a hard-fought victory over Georgia Southern, 27-17. Let's head down to the turf. Ted Byrne is standing by with the victorious coach of the Apps, Jerry Moore. Ted? I couldn't get him to stay with me at halftime, but he says he doesn't have a meeting until 2 tomorrow. I think we got time to talk to the winning coach, Jerry Moore. Coach, uh, great performance by your team. You're still undefeated. Well, thank you. Our players, they played hard. I, I thought our coaches did a terrific job preparing our players to play. Uh, we didn't look much like it on that drive just before the half. That was a real credit to Georgia Southern. I tell you, they got a terrific football team. We feel very fortunate to, to win this ball game like we did. I, we've got all the respect in the world for their coaches and their players. They play hard. Well, Coach, the nice part about this was it was kind of a three-phase victory. I mean, your offense was running the ball well. Your kicking game seemed to perform, and the defense stepped up when they had to. Well, they did. Uh, I, was, I was proud of Jay Sutton. I, they made two critical field goals and then uh, the kickoffs. Uh, we, we, pushed, we didn't do a very good job 
covering kickoffs. We, we didn't have anything else to do. We squibbed it, we kicked it deep, and now we pooched. And uh, I, thought he, I thought he kicked the ball well for us. Coach, I know this was a, a game that you obviously were focused in on, but now next week you move ahead. You've got a tough one next week ahead. Let me tell you something. They're all tough in the I Southern know, Conference. I know, I know. And I know the, the, everybody's pointing to Marshall, and, and they, they got a terrific football team. We've had great football games with them, just like we have with Georgia Southern. And I'm sure both uh, teams and the fans and everybody are all looking forward to next Saturday night. All right, uh, and Coach, uh, well, again, as you uh, prepare for Marshall next week, this conference doesn't get any easier, but uh, compare the conference this year to some of the years past. Well, I'm not sure about what it did better. I, you know, again, I, I, we, we could went into this ball game thinking Georgia Southern was a terrific football, and we still do. And to win by 10 uh, just seems like a, a blowout to me because I, I thought maybe a field goal would win it. And, but uh, you look at uh, just like VMI, I think they beat uh, Chattanooga today. Chattanooga uh, played Marshall well, played Georgia Southern well. I mean, uh, it's just a great league. I mean, it's one, of, if not the premier, it's one of the premier 1AA leagues in the country. Just like today, today is a great college football game. Yeah. It was. It was a good seesaw battle. Coach, thanks for joining us, and congratulations once again. Thank you all for what you do for the Southern Conference. All righty. Back upstairs to you guys. All right, Ted. Thank you very much. And Jerry Moore obviously very happy. And now he can give his full attention to the Marshall Thundering Herd in what should be a very, very entertaining and hard-hitting game next week in Huntington. In fact, uh, I think if you look at the record, the only team to win a regular season game at Marshall in the history of Marshall Stadium is Appalachian. So that's shaping up for a very interesting game. Hey, there's our Reebok player of the game, Damon Scott. And what a game he had. Damon, 30 carries, 145 yards, and a big touchdown. And you know, one of the plays that you won't see in the stat sheet that was very important, Cliff, remember that botched pitch that he had to mm -hmm. return and get back on? Georgia Southern recovers that. That's a one-possession game. That was a big, big play. Damon Scott is our Reebok player of the game. We'll step aside again from Boone and return with some final thoughts from Kid Brewer Stadium in just a moment. Stay tuned. It's been a great season so far for Appalachian. The Apps win today over Georgia Southern by 10, 27-17. So Appalachian is now 6-0 overall, 3-0 in the Southern Conference. For Georgia Southern, they dropped to 4-2 and 2-2 and two and two in the league. Cliff, let's take a look at the final stats of this ball game and look what jumps out immediately, the rushing yards for Appalachian. Yeah, they've, they've got a huge advantage there, but then you look the other side, Georgia Southern way ahead, almost 100 yards ahead in rushing yards. It comes right down to, you know, just about a 21-yard difference in total offense, and Georgia Southern actually had one more first down, but three turnovers. You know, any coach tell you special teams, turnovers, and uh, the, kick, the kicking game, that's what's going to, well, you know, that's what's going to be the difference the football game, and sure it was today. And, you know, uh, they had such a, a terrific edge and turnover ratio, Georgia Southern, up to this point today, but it just didn't work out. One of the key plays in this game took place in the second quarter when it appeared as if Georgia Southern had a Appalachian scoring drive stopped, but Brancis Williams could not hold on to this interception. The ball is going to be knocked away by our Reebok player of the game, Damon Scott, and Jeff Fulmer is there to fall on it in the end zone for an Appalachian touchdown. Really deflated the Eagles. Well, Damon Scott forced the fumble there, and we were talking before the last break on the fumble late in the game on the option. He went back and got it. So he, he did a lot more today than just carry the football. He also blocked very well when other people carried it. All right, we hope you enjoyed the game as much as we did bringing it to you. For Ted Byrne and Cliff Stout, this is Dave Weekly saying so long from Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone. Appalachian wins 27-17.